Okay. I'm going to pick up the mic. Hey guys, uh, welcome to our AP seminar presentation, AP capstone presentation. Uh, obviously, if you're home, uh, we welcome you to our presentation as well. Behind me are our fine teachers who uh, really are the driving force behind our AP Capstone program. Uh, it's uh, Ms. Jones, Ms. Pepe, and Ms. Naughton. Uh, they are fantastic superstars, and uh, they have a lot to share with you about our program. Uh, for one, for myself, I I'm I, I look at this as one of our most prestigious programs that we have in our high school, uh, and I know they have a lot of numbers that they're going to share through their presentation, but one, one number that they don't share in the presentation uh, is something that I know, is that uh, just as far as where we stand competitively within the county, we have probably one of the top five AP capstone programs in the county. Um, the, the presentation, you'll see their numbers and where we stand in terms of nationwide. Uh, but you know what, you have to, I think you take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. A big question is like, where do we stand in terms of our surrounding community, right? I think Nassau and, and, and Suffolk County are, are probably one of the top communities in uh, the country as far as education. And you know, what I could probably stand behind and, and share is, you know, the teachers here have, uh, they run such a great program that our capstone program is one of the top five competitive programs in all of Nassau County. So that is something to highlight and, and be proud of, not only as a building principal, as teachers, but a, a, as a community as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to our, our teachers. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Um, so we're going to talk to you about what Capstone entails today. Um, I'm Miss Jones. I'm one of the social studies people that's part of the uh, Capstone team. I'm Miss Pepe, the other social studies part. And I am Heather Naughton. I'm the English part of the team. So AP Seminar is the first step on a path to the AP Capstone Diploma. They will take AP Seminar as their first year. There are a couple of task projects that they are going to be responsible for completing, team project and presentation, individual research-based essay and presentation, and then the end of course AP exam as well. They will go on to AP research for year two where it's a focus on an academic paper, a presentation, and oral defense questions. So to get your capstone diploma, you have to uh, receive a three or higher in AP seminar, AP research, as well as four other AP courses and exams throughout their high school career. <clears throat> so what the question we get asked the most often is why should you take capstone? And so we usually get emails at the beginning of the year from our students in college and we wanted to share with you what they had to say. Um, so <laughs> this one <laughs> Sure. Um, while there have been times when my relationship with Capstone program has been bordering on love-hate, um, there's no other class that I would have found so worthwhile. I feel so much better prepared for college. I know that skills I have learned will carry over into nearly every aspect of my life. Another quote we've had is, I've used so many things that I have learned in your class in only the second week of college. The transition would have been so much harder if I hadn't taken Capstone, so thank you for ultimately making college much easier for me. It is a class that is going to really improve your reading, writing, and reasoning skills that help a lot in your other classes. Even though it seems overwhelming at times, it really helps to show you workload control. Um, the skills I've acquired through AP Capstone have truly served me well in every course I've taken and am currently taking. In 10th grade, I don't believe I understood what it meant to be doing college level work. But being in college, I understand that the experience of AP Capstone is one that is priceless. So Wanto High School's AP Capstone scores, um, last year we did have a 100% passing rate. The mean score was th uh, 3.50. New York State had a 71% uh, passing rate and globally was an 82% passing rate. For AP Research, Wanto had a 95% passing rate, New York State 77% and globally 83%. Uh, you can also see here, since the program has started, uh, consistently the valedictorian and the sal salutatorian have been capstone students. So if you're wondering what kind of students end up being successful in the program, they tend to soar. Okay, so this brings us to one of the most important components both for both your student and um, for yourselves. Um, a major part of capstone is having this idea of a growth mindset. Being able to understand that where you start should not be where you end. Um, and every task, every piece of paper, well, we don't really hand out paper, but <laughs> every assignment, um, 
pretty much everything we do in the class is driving to some other understanding, some higher order um, learning or information, and that you should be growing throughout the process. You shouldn't start at 100%, but you should end somewhere close to there. So the AP Seminar College Board score breakdown is task one is going to be worth 20% of their score. It's an individual paper as well as a team presentation. Task two is an individual paper and an individual presentation at about 30, at 35% of their score. And then the end of course exam is the analysis of an argument and a written original argument worth 45% of that score. Students who take AP seminar essentially get credit for two classes. That's why the workload is so intense in seminar. They're going to be getting the College Board AP seminar credit. They're also getting from New York State the 10th grade honors English credit. So they do have to read the literature for 10th grade honors English as well as complete the requirements for College Board. So these are some of the um, pieces of literature that we cover throughout their 10th grade year along with the um, AP seminar piece. Um, they read Night, um, they read uh, <laughs> Of Mice and Men, they just are finishing, they just finished that actually. Um, and then at the end of the year we read together To Kill a Mockingbird. It's one of my favorite parts of the year honestly. <laughs> the AP, AP Research College Board score breakdown is a presentation in oral defense which is a 20 minute presentation and oral defense worth 25% and the research paper, which is an academic study done throughout the year at 75%. AP research is a little bit different from AP seminar. AP research is an elective course offered through the social studies department. Okay, so some of the benefits of AP capstone. Um, you can earn a distinction on your diploma. Um, you will acquire, which this is the one that I find actually the most important, you're going to acquire some really strong um, discipline in terms of time management, study skills, writing skills, um, editing skills. You'll find when your student um, is in other classes, their friends are going to come to them and ask them to reread papers. Mm -hmm. um, when they go to college, they're going to be, you know, of the utmost sort of like in demand. Um, because they really understand how to pull apart writing, how to understand sources, and how to bring those sources together to create a um, coherent, cohesive argument. And then finally, um, in research, children get to, or students get to um, decide their own course of study, which really gives them a level of autonomy that they don't really have in other classes in the high school. Um, and they choose really what to study for eight months. Um, they go super in depth. Um, and you'd be surprised at how knowledgeable and excited they are. Um, and it's always every year at the end of the year when we get to see both seminar and research presentations, it's really like heartwarming and exciting. I like have to fight back tears because I'm so proud of them. Uh, below are some of the 140 plus colleges that have endorsed AP Capstone for its challenging interdisciplinary curricula. Also over 100 colleges have developed credit policies. So if you're asking, is my student the right candidate for Capstone or ready for Capstone, these are some discussion questions we've come up with to help you sit down with them over the dinner table at home and say, is this, does this describe you? So the first one is, is your student excited about the potential challenge of an AP course? Oh, sorry. <laughs> does your student feel successful in ninth grade, especially in reading and writing skills? Is your student good at time management or looking to improve their time management? Does your student enjoy being challenged? Does your student enjoy, uh, oh sorry. Does your student enjoy giving presentations? Does your student work well in groups? Is your student able to handle constructive criticism and peer feedback? Is your student able to take initiative? And does your student value education over grades? Growth mindset. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thank now you. is when we answer lots of questions. <laughs> Questions or no questions? We just. Uh, right now we have about 55 right. in seminar and about 30 in research. I think it's a exactly, little less. I think it's exactly, exactly 30, 30 in, in research. research. I just add to that too. Um, so one of the slides that uh, the final lady just presented was the uh, valedictorian salutatorian slides, right? Um, but I want everyone to also understand it's not just for that type of person, right? It's not just for our, our top. Top, top students in, 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 in the building, right? Uh, right now, to, like they said, we have 50 something, five, yeah. five in summer. So to put that in perspective, 
That's what 25% of our students are in AP seminar. We only have roughly 200 kids in our building. 25% of them are in AP capstone, and with the support of the teachers, they are they're exceeding, and some of them are even excelling. So I just wanted to share that because I didn't want some of you thinking, oh my God, this is only for uh, you know the students we think are going to be valid, valid, valid students with this learning. But it, it's not. It, it's really a, a course and a program for students that care about their work, students that want to challenge themselves. Because it's not the easiest courses. It's not, right? But if, if they care and they are willing to work hard, what they put into it, I promise they're going to get so much more out of it. They're going to be prepared for every single course that they come across in 11th grade, in, in their senior year of high school, as well as when they go to college. It's also a different type of learning. When I go into a, a, a traditional classroom, there is a lot of, uh, you know, we try to do shifting motion group work and stuff like that. But by design, when you walk by the classrooms, they, they work at tables, right? They work at tables, uh, students are groups of four, right? Uh, and what they're doing is they're, they're communicating, they're challenging each other, they're challenging one another. Uh, they are looking at, at text and looking at both sides. Uh, these are the skills that we want to develop with our students because we know they guarantee long-term success. So I just wanted to jump in on that piece because uh, the question kind of raised something that I just wanted to highlight was that it's not for the top, only for the top 5%. It, it's for us right now, it's 25% of our student population, which I have to say, um, we have an option with our, our, some of our strongest students, if they choose not to go to AP uh, Seminar, we have a 10H, right? For some schools, they only offer AP SEM or a 10R. Our numbers are still better than some of those schools that offer uh, only that paradigm, right? We have a 10 H class, and yet we still have strong numbers in AP Capstone, and it's because of what they put into it. It's exciting. Uh, when you see in, in the second year, when they're in AP Research, and they're doing their presentation, and they nail it, you see tears of joy, you see happiness, uh, we get phone calls from parents saying, you know, my, when, I, when my child first came into AP seminar, they didn't even have a voice. Yet, at the end of year two in AP research, they're doing a presentation not only in front of these ladies, but also maybe the school principal, maybe our assistant superintendent, maybe our director of STEM. And they're not only, not only do they have a voice, but they're presenting a problem, presenting their approach to that problem, they're presenting uh, their analysis on how they wanted to implement their methodology and then analyze the results and then come up with a solution. They've, some of our students have jumped leaps and bounds through this program. And I just had to add that because uh, yeah. I, I really am a firm believer that this program is for any child that cares, is willing to work hard, and maybe even sacrifice a little bit. Right? Um, it's not just for, for the you know students who we think might be valid or proud. Sorry. No, I you're good. I think a question back there. What percentage of the students that have been at a seminar in particular that then go into the About three fourths, I'd say. <coughs> I would say maybe even a little bit more than that. Yeah. It's, well, the second year is an elective mm -hmm. course, so it may not fit in their schedule as well. Um, they may have gotten, uh, we, have, we haven't had any twos in seminar in a while, but we've had a year or two where the student got a two and they felt, I'm not going to move forward then. It's, a, it's good to know that even if you do get a two in seminar research, you can still get a capstone certificate. So it's not a dead end in terms of participation in that. Some students do feel that it became too rigorous or that they're taking a lot of AP classes junior year. Or it's balancing their with, schedule or yeah. conflicts with, yeah. you know, honors, but whatever it is. So it's, it's a variety. No, I think taking any of it yeah. shows the college that you are truly motivated to step above and beyond in your education. Um, I think if you choose not to move on with the whole program, that just says that you're judicious about how to use your time. Yeah, yeah. I agree 100%. Uh, my background is in school. Uh, I was supervisor of, of school counseling, so I worked a lot with college admission reps. I don't. Th it, it's there's no negative stigma if someone didn't continue into the AP research program. You know, one thing that I will stress, right? Uh, something Miss Thorne brought up is that sometimes students uh, may feel defeated because maybe they got a two on their uh, AP seminar. They don't want to continue something like. We
we, we speak about, right? Like that's a really a fixed mindset. But what we really want to talk about is this growth men mindset idea and the fact that, okay, you got the two. It's not all about the 18 caps of diploma. It's about the experience that you're getting, right? Going into that next level and, and taking and sitting in that class and really learning how to analyze and assess. And then from a college level, I have to be honest, you know, they don't, colleges don't look at the AP scores until after you've been admitted, right? Only after you have been admitted, families at that point, you submit AP scores because the goal of submitting the AP scores is to try to get college credit, right? When they evaluate transcripts, what they evaluate is how they performed in the course, not what they got on the AP exam, right? So someone who may have gotten a two on the AP uh, seminar exam, that shouldn't be a reason why we say, you know what? You're not made out for this, don't, don't continue on to research. Because that's not what we preach here at Wentzel High School, right? It's if you want to continue on and challenge yourselves, the, the benefits outweigh um, the, the, the cons and, and, and not continuing. And, and there are, but to that, to your point, if the decision is not to move on, it, it doesn't hurt them in any way. This year there are two AP seminar classes. One has 25, one has 27, and they're very big. And the AP research class has about 14 or 15 in each this year. And just, uh, she asked how big are the class sizes and how many um, sections, but one thing, they are a little big, but we have two teachers in the class. So it, it's not just 24 to, to one teacher, we have 24 to two teachers. We have one in English. Seminar. In seminar. Yeah, and our research numbers are smaller, uh, and we only have one teacher in, in the research section, but for the seminar section, we have one of our, our, our stellar, well, Ms. Naughton is our stellar English person in that class, and then uh, Ms. Jones and Ms. Pepe, they, all, they, they switch off uh, each of the other sections. But we have two teachers in those classes every day. Are you talking, uh, the question was, uh, has there been any thought to, another uh, like another section, uh, of, you know, beyond 24 and 27? Uh, the, only, the only problem that we truthfully have with that, not every district offers a seminar capstone class with two teachers in, in uh, each of the courses, right? So it does become a little bit cost prohibitive. Um, we could, you know, depending on the numbers, we're, all, we're, we're completely into the idea of growing the AP capstone. If the numbers did justify uh, a third section, we would definitely break a third section, and we're also committed to continue our model of having two teachers in, in, uh, within that. Uh, but giving like numbers such as 24 and 27, having two full-time teachers within the course, that's like a 14 to one ratio. You know, it's, 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 it's pretty cost prohibitive to continue to, to grow that in let's say like 15 to two, right? Um, that, that does become a little problematic um, in terms of finances and stuff like that. To get the, to get the um, distinction on your diploma, you have to have both pass both, both capstone courses and then three other, uh, four, oh, excuse me, four other capstone courses. I mean, four, four other oh AP my God. Courses. Four <laughs> other AP pass. courses with a three, yeah. what I was trying to say. Okay. And you only take eight, eight, eight for each tenth grade for seminar. Yeah. 10th grade for seminar and 11th grade for research. And then the other AP is any other year. So even if you took um, a ninth grade, like a LEAPS class, that counts towards your, um, ultimately towards your AP diploma, capstone yeah. diploma. The capstone AP classes, capstone class. yes. 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 Is it the same thing that goes on your diploma? Yes. It's a diploma from College mm -hmm. Board. It's a special certificate from College Board that they get that they can print out, but it's really they put it on their, their transcript that they earn the capstone diploma. So, look, my answer, 
My question, uh, the, the question from uh, this parent is, uh, they have conversations at home and you know, they, they question like, is it worth it to, to try to work towards a, a capstone diploma, right? So my response to that is, we shouldn't be working for, towards a capstone diploma. That's what my response is, okay? I think we, as families and as educators, we, we guide our students and our children into a course of study that we believe will prepare them for the future um, in, in the best possible way, right? If along that path we guide them and they attain something like a capstone diploma, that is, that's cherry on top and that's fantastic, right? Uh, we're looking at colleges. Colleges, what they're going to look at, they're going to look at the transcript and the course of study more than anything else. Right, so N in terms of capstone, capstone itself is a program that is prestigious and that they do value more and above some of the other AP capstone courses. Uh, so yes, I want to say that it does matter, and what they do in the class does does ha hold weight because it is a, such a prestigious program. But I wouldn't make the capstone diploma the end all be all of whether or not to, to take a, a certain class or, or not. Um, just say, um, yeah. It's also yeah. like the skills that right. they're That's learning. Right. Add yeah. And well. a lot of the things, like I don't know if you saw the quotes from other students that when you walked in. So ideally, we hear this all the time, first year college students that don't know the fundamentals of writing and critically thinking and looking up these valuable sources and yeah. reliabilities. Like they go in there as a first year freshman and they don't feel lost. A little pain now saves yeah. a lot of yeah. pain later, yeah. to be honest. Mm -hmm. Of course. I'll flat Especially out say that to students. Yeah. I, I will flat out say to students, you are going to have this growing curve. Yeah. You're going to do it the first year of college if you're paying for it, and you're away from home, and you're doing all that adjustment also. Or you can do it now when you have a little bit more support. It's within the high school range. You've got two teachers here. I have a 10th grade daughter. And I would 100% make her take this if her school had it. Because I see what it, how it pushes the kids and grows them. I would not even care if she got the diploma or, or got the three. It's the skill. It's the value the of the skill. Because the skill that mm -hmm. I see these kids sure. acquiring, they'll come out a stronger writer than they started. Mm -hmm. They'll come out a stronger speaker than they started. They'll come out a stronger critical thinker. We've had kids go to Oxford summer programs and say, I got pulled aside by the professors to say, how do you know to start a presentation like that? So it's the skill to me rather than the... So yes, it's yeah. worth it, yeah. <laughs> is ultimately yeah, the yeah. answer. Yeah. So I just, for the uh, people here, will we repeat the question just so you know? It's because uh, we are live streaming and I want them to be able to uh, hear the question that's being asked. Uh, the current question is, you know, how do I get my child to buy into what you're selling, right? Um, so I, I think it's a multi-pronged approach, right? One is, yes, at home, at the dinner table, but then also encourage them to come talk to us, right? Have them come talk to the teachers, have them come talk to their current English teacher, have them come talk to their counselor, and you know what? If they're not willing to come, email me, and I will find them, okay? Or email, I promise, like, I'm very responsive. You know, I will sit down and, and I'll have a conversation. I'm not gonna push, right? I'm not like a pushy person, but, uh, you know, I, if, if there, there needs to be an uh, explanation, I try to, try to, if, you know, like, can you just explain what you explained, potentially? Like, I have no problem doing that. But uh, it's, it's a multi-pronged approach, right? At home, sharing that, but also hearing it from, from school. And they can come see any one of us, uh, and our counselors will give them the same information. Um, just reach out to us, and if you feel like you need some help and clarity on some of this, we'll help you out. Um, I can also say, as I also teach AP European History, so I share a lot of students with AP SEM and AP Euro, and immediately in the class, like for a immediate like instant gratification, their essays, I could tell immediately that they're in. Like it is such a such a huge divide between your honors English student, not because they those kids aren't capable, it's because of the skill set that they're learning so quickly in our class. Um, and I feel like that's a really good selling point. Grades in other classes are going to go up as a result of being able to understand materials at a deeper level. So yes, worth it. Again, I'll reiterate. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Sure. The, the question is, do they get recommended, or is that something they could uh, go through guidance for? So um, it is a course that they can be recommended for. They don't necessarily have to be recommended for. We do have a, a process in terms of scheduling, in terms of uh, some courses that require recommendation. So if, it's a, if a child gets recommended by the teacher, then uh, that there would be, you know, a, just it kind of goes right into the part of the discussion. If uh, the child's meeting with the counselor, and uh, we'll talk a bit, little bit more about the scheduling process so you know in, into the 10 into 12 uh, part of this meeting but uh, in terms of seminar if you had a child that maybe wasn't recommended but has a, a level of interest is still pursuing it you know we do have a process of where it's it just really communication right so uh, my big our big belief here is we educate and inform our our students and our families and they make the decisions and you know we don't want to ever tell anyone they can't but we want to educate and inform and uh, so families and children can make their own choices so they don't get a recommendation initially it might just mean that it, it further discussion might be required if the family wants to do it and we have basically like a, a three a two a three point check mark uh, three benchmarks really uh, when we're looking to almost like challenge into a course right one is the teacher recommendation two would be a, a conversation to the counselor and then after the conversation with the counselor uh, it would go to the director and each one of those things those are all conversations at no point it's, is it really a no. It's just, hey, I just want to let you know, like, this is what the course is uh, designed. This is what we're looking at. This is how your child's performing in here. And after all, the, after all three of those conversations, if a family still wants to pursue it, we're never going to tell a family no. is for the 10th grade honors, so they do read one of the books and annotate that, focusing on author's craft. The other part of it is asking them to analyze and critically, and critically evaluate peer-reviewed articles because they haven't done reading at that level before, and they go through it basically mimicking the end of course exam over the summer. For AP research, it's also a two-piece assignment. One is your interests and getting ready to present to the class and discuss what your passions are so that you can start to pick something you really want to live with for the eight months. And the other half is critical analysis of um, articles research. surrounding the articles. things that you might want to study for eight months. Okay. Any other questions for AP Capstone? Yes. They choose. We they can't. Choose yeah. We can't tell them. They, they. We can't tell them a subject. We can't tell them a topic. They choose. Yeah. Extremely open. Like literally anything in the world that has not yet been studied. There has to be gap, and it has to be ethical. And just for the families at home, the question was uh, how to, as part of the AP research. Uh, portion, how do topics get selected, and uh, for our teachers to share that it, it's open to really students. It's it's driven by students. Uh, we only have time for about two more questions before we move into our 10 into 12. So we'll take the last two. And if there's any other questions after, after this, uh, specifically to AP Capstone, feel free to email any one of us. Uh, Ms. Rossley, she's our Director of Humanities. Uh, she would be more than happy to engage in any conversations. But got two more questions. Yep. Yeah, so this, this, this uh, everyone should have, I, would, I hope everyone received the, the parent square. So I sent out uh, three, I want to say. I think I sent out uh, one in early December. I, th I sent one out right prior to um, December break. And then I, I should have sent one out, I think I did, yesterday. Um, so if you haven't received that, you can let us know. And we can make sure that you're, for some reason, there's, there's a technical piece, maybe uh, as to why you're not receiving those notifications. Through Capstone? Yeah. Oh, through Capstone, it's the same as anything else. Like, you'll look on um, Infinite Campus, Schoology. Um, but we're actually very communicative with our parents. If we feel um, that we haven't gotten through to your student, we'll make sure that we keep you in touch. But usually, we have them um, take ownership over their education. This is a very education. Yeah. course. Like, we do expect direct communication between right. teacher mm -hmm. and Student, student only because this course is so intricate that it sometimes gets lost in translation sometimes mm -hmm. at home. But of course, if we are worried or anything, Absolutely. we're very send a little email yeah, right away. Email. 
We also and we're happy to answer yours. Progress, um, by every week of the two-year journey, mm -hmm. they do a weekly check-in. Yeah. Just where okay. are you at? How are you? Are there any problems? Do you have any questions for us? And every week, one of the three of us will grade that to make sure every student is, is moving forward okay. Okay. Yeah. And any other questions for okay. AP Capstone? One more. One more. Yeah, last question. Wait, Go ahead. Wait, no, wait, he, he was first. Okay, who was first? Olivia, you can ask me tomorrow in class. Yeah. Any four. Because we've tied it to 10th grade um, English, oh, mm -hmm. so it would essentially be taking t going through the 10th grade English literature again. Um, that's just the way we structured it. Every school structures it a little bit differently, but because the writing reading skills are so intense, we really felt it sat very well. Yep. In, in, in English. The, uh, just for the people at home, the question is, you know, why can't they really start, why can't students start the program in 11th grade? And the answer to that is we do consider it and, and assign 10th grade English credit to that course. So a student couldn't take AP seminar and, and really receive uh, almost like that English credit because they've already earned it in, in 10th grade. Yeah. Because okay, it's, it's yeah. combined with AP with English 10th curriculum. All right, Thank so you, uh, you can ask, the ladies are going to leave, so you can come down and ask her right there your question, all right? But uh, we're, in about 30 seconds, we're going to move into our uh, 10th to 12th grade presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Jones, Ms. Pepe, and Ms. Naughton. Okay, it is officially 6.33, we're going to get started, uh, just so we can stay on track with our, our timing. So uh, I am uh, Paul Gazone, I am the, the proud principal of Wanta High School. This is my third year here, and uh, I can't share enough uh, how excited I am to actually finally have like a traditional year as principal. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, been a crazy last two years, and it's been a great last couple of months so uh it's 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 been really tremendous uh i hope everyone had a healthy safe and relaxing uh vacation and uh welcome to curriculum night now this is the second year we've structured this program in this way traditionally it was uh kind of run through a, a 9 through 12 program 
but what we wanted to do is uh, kind of separate our returning students from our eight into nine because uh, we just feel like there's different needs for our our tenth uh, our returning students and our our families coming in into ninth grade at, at the middle school. Uh, we've had good feedback last year, so we're gonna we're continuing with this model, and we know that uh, when you walk away today, you'll have the information that you need to uh, make some good choices. And uh, after a brief Q and A, uh, if there's still some questions that you have, you could definitely reach out to any one of us, uh, and we will we will help you with that and uh, you know when I say reach out to any one of us you can reach out to any one of us up on the screen I'm not going to go through uh, person by person uh, these are our directors and assistant principals that uh, support the building uh, if you have any specific questions regarding to anything in the specific specific content areas after tonight uh, feel free to to reach out to any one of these people now um, what I always like to stress you know if I had the opportunity to work with them for two and a half years and uh, they're they're a great team but what I what I like what I love most about them is every uh, every decision that we make as a team always starts with the question of what's best for students Right, it starts with what's best for students, uh, and then we may get into some discussions about you know the direction where we want to go. But then it always ends up the ending with the same question, and you know what's best with student, what's best for students, and that's always the direction that uh, we always end. And I just wanted you guys to know that because this is the team that really leads this building. Uh, they care a lot about the community and the children that occupy this building every single day. So uh, on this slide, there's a, a good number, a, a good, good portion of data. I'm only going to really highlight uh, three key pieces. Um, the piece, the first one I'm going to speak to, it, it really speaks to some of our, our goals, and, and that is to ensure that every student, uh, when they leave Wontaw High School, they are able to uh, critically think, they're able to collaborate, communicate, and be creative at a high level, because above all, above content, those skills are what we know are going to deliver uh, long-term success for our, for our students. Um, and, I, and I think that's super important. And you know, we offer over 50 college-level and AP-level courses at our high school. Uh, we're a small high school, so we offer a lot to our student body. Uh, last year's graduating class, we had 90% of our students take at least one college or AP-level course within their, their four years here. Um, and, and the experience they they got from taking these courses set them along their way. Uh, I can't stress enough that for every single student in this building, there is at least one college or AP level course for that child that connects to their strengths as well as their interests. Uh, over the time, while while you're here, while they're here, if they're not sure which course that is, uh, we can help guide them through our, our counselors, our, our teachers, our our directors, our principals. You know, we're here for we're here for them in any which way. You know, the second piece or second and third piece of information that I'm really proud of that I like to share is, is in that box. And in that box, uh, you see 94.5% of our students return for a second year of college. The NA represents national average, so the national average is 76%. Uh, the next piece of information is 77.5% of our students complete a degree within uh, six years. The national average is 61%. Now. Uh, if you look at those numbers, right, they, they, they really represent a difference of 18.5% and 16.5% when compared to the national average. But to think of it differently, uh, those, those, val those rates of 18.5% and 16.5%, they correlate to a, basically a 25% increase or a 25% more. Your Just by attending Wontaw High School, your kids are 25% more likely than the, the average student in this country to go to their second year in college as well as uh, to get the degree within six years. And that's substantial and that's significant. You know, 25% increase, your odds being finishing uh, at, at that level above the national average is, is substantial. And, you know, that's something that I'm proud of. A lot of, when you go to these nights, a lot of times schools will kind of like show you the, the colleges where kids get accepted into. And, and we like that too. We love highlighting our, the success of our kids. But, you know, for me and for this building, what we think is equally as important is what do they do when they actually get there, right? Are they actually staying in college and they're getting their degrees? And that data shows us that they are. And that's something that uh, we're extremely proud of and you should be too. Now, with that, um, I'm going to uh, hand this off to uh, Dr. Women. All right? Dr. Women is one of our assistant principals here at Wontaw High School. All right. I don't know if you want to hold it or... Thank you, Dr. Gazone. 
Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Glad you were able to come out. Everybody at home, hello. Okay. Um, what I'd like to have you look at here, what you see on the screen right now are some of the new additions uh, to our course offerings that will be available to our students in September of 2023. There are going to be new courses that we haven't offered before. Okay. Um, each of these courses, AP Pre-Calculus in the Math Department, AP Calculus BC Extension Period, uh, American Pop Culture in the Social Studies Department, and Matter and Energy. Uh, these are courses are in addition to what we already offer, uh, all of which you'll hear about tonight later on when the directors run through their programs, but we like to highlight some of the new courses. because so We're always looking to uh, add to our portfolio of courses that we offer here and give children opportunities to um, engage in new uh, learning activities. Um, all these new courses will absolutely tap into the many uh, into many of our students' interests, enable them to take a hands-on approach to learning, and put them in line uh, to be leaders in, a bo in booming career fields. They'll also make their resumes competitive, as well as afford them the opportunity to earn college credit, uh, which is always a nice thing. Uh, one of the other things we're really proud of here are the different honor societies that we offer here at Wanto High School. Uh, one of the things um, that we are so proud of is that we recognize students who achieve at the highest level uh, through our many different honor societies. They recognize overall high academic achievement and leadership, as well as department-specific honor societies, which you'll see on the board, on the screen there, uh, that recognize students who excel in specific academic disciplines. Uh, so all of these are open to all of our children. Um, there is, and many of them, there is an application process, but uh, through certain departments, if they're strong in art or they're strong in music, or we have the overall National Honor Society, which is uh, a national uh, society that recognizes students who are of high academic achievement. Uh, so now, I don't know who I'm turning. I'm turning it over to Dr. Gazone, because Ms. Rossley is not here. Yes. Oh. Okay, so I am not Miss Rossley. Unfortunately, Miss Rossley uh, was not able to make it tonight. Uh, she is a little bit under the weather. Uh, we did offer to take over her role and, 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 and really introduce the, and describe English and world language and, and soul studies, but she decided that she was going to make a little video herself because she cares so much. Like I said, she cares. All right, so I'm going to play her video. Good evening and thank you for your attendance tonight. My name is Julie Rossley, and I'm the Director of Humanities for the Wantaw School District. I apologize for not being able to present in person, but I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some information about the humanities programs here at Wantaw High School. The teachers in the English and Reading Departments of Wantaw High School seek to enhance students' reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills, and to further their appreciation and understanding of literature and communication. We encourage students to think critically and creatively by exploring a variety of authors, genres, and mediums, and by challenging each learner to read, analyze, and discuss the words of others. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence in English and to pass the English Regents exam in 11th grade. In 10th grade, students may enroll in English 10R, English 10H, or AP Seminar. While, as juniors, students may enroll in Regents Level English or AP English Language and Composition. As seniors, students may enroll in English 12R Foundations, College English, or AP Literature and Composition. Additionally, students may enroll in semester-long English electives as well as support classes to strengthen their reading and writing skills. As you can see from this flowchart, students are not tracked in English, so they may choose to move from Regents Level to Honors Level or vice versa from year to year. This flexibility holds true in social studies and world languages as well. Please be aware that the rigor of each level increases or decreases substantially based on the level your child is enrolled in. If you have any questions about levels, please feel free to speak with your child's teacher or with me. The goal of the Wanta High School Social Studies Department is to prepare students for college, careers, and civic life with courses that are rigorous and aligned to New York State Learning Standards for Social Studies. Social Studies is intended to promote civic competence through integrated study of social sciences and humanities. 
The primary purpose of social studies is to help young people develop the ability to make informed and reasoned decisions for the public good of citizens of a culturally diverse democratic society in an independent world. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence in social studies and to take the Regents exam in 10th and 11th grade. In 10th grade, students may enroll in either Global History II, AP European History, or AP World History Modern, while as juniors, they may enroll in Regents Level or AP US History. As seniors, students take a combination of government and economic courses, which can be standard college or AP level. The Social Studies Department takes pride in its philosophy and practice of challenging students intellectually in an academically stimulating environment and offers AP elective courses, such as AP Research, for juniors who have successfully completed AP Seminar, and AP Psychology and AP European History for juniors and seniors. Additionally, the department has a long-standing relationship with Syracuse University and LIU Post, and we offer five college credit bearing courses for our students. These courses are taken by students at Wanta High School and taught by our university certified teachers. Students who enroll in these courses and pay the college tuition to the respective university may be granted college credit if they earn a grade of a C or better. These college credits are transferable to most colleges and universities. When students enter the high school, they continue their coursework with the target language selected in sixth grade. Annually, every student has the opportunity to enroll in a Regents honors, pre-AP, college, or AP level course, depending on the student's grade level and if the student meets the entry criteria for each of these courses. In each of the world language courses, students engage in learning new vocabulary, conjugating verbs, discovering cultural similarities and differences, and understanding diversity. In 10th grade, students take the Checkpoint B exam, which is administered in June. In 11th and 12th grades, Students have the option to continue with their world language courses, taking regular or pre-AP world language courses in 11th grade and college level or AP courses as seniors. Taking these classes grants students a variety of academic opportunities, including obtaining college credit for their studies in 12th grade. As seniors, students enrolled in either college level or AP level world language courses have the opportunity to apply for the Seal of Biliteracy a prestigious award recognizing students who have studied and attained proficiency in two or more languages by high school graduation. The intent of the New York State Seal of Biliteracy is to encourage the study of languages, identify high school graduates with language and biliteracy skills for employers, provide universities with additional information about applicants seeking admission, prepare students with 21st century skills, recognize the value of foreign and native language instruction in schools, and affirm the value of diversity in a multilingual society. Students enrolled in ENL classes receive core content area and English language development instruction to ensure communication and comprehension. Should you have questions about any of these courses or opportunities that I have highlighted this evening, please consult the curriculum guide or contact me. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Christopher Kozak, Director of STEM. Okay. Yeah, uh, just before Mr. Kozak goes, I just want to um, share, you know, Ms. Ms. Wines did bring up a great point. Uh, this tonight, this presentation is being recorded, uh, so if, you're, if you miss some information, you can access the presentation tomorrow uh, in the afternoon through uh, on the Wanto High School web page. We created a new yellow dot. I think if you've been to the Wanto High School webpage, you've seen these yellow dots. It's called uh, uh, live stream. So you click on the live stream dot and you can access all our live streams, uh, including this one. Also, please make sure uh, if you have any questions about courses or flow charts, they're, they're in the, the curriculum guide that I know Mr. Uh, Muzio might talk about in a little bit. But Mr. Kozak. Good evening. We're good. We're about 10 seconds behind on our live stream. We're good? Okay, great. I just want to mess our tech staff up. So good evening. My name is Christopher Kozak. Um, I'm the director of STEM, and I'm going to walk you through our terrific course offerings we have in science, um, mathematics, and technology. First up is our science courses, and I just put a GIF up here of, a, a GIF up here of 
or aquaponics lab. So if I'm too boring, just concentrate on the basil we just harvested, bok choy, um, peppers. We have three different types of eggplants. Um, our students just harvested them this week because the program is coming to an end at the end of the quarter. Um, they did a terrific job. This is Mr. Mule's lab. It, it's phenomenal. Um, so in terms of science, the vision of the secondary science department is to enhance students' per, uh, perseverance, critical thinking, real-world application, and inv investigation skills through hands-on, minds-on approach to science learning. Uh, the department is focused on allowing students to choose course options that allow for multiple opportunities to meet their graduation requirements, pursue an advanced regents diploma, earn college credit in science, or put together a competitive academic portfolio for college application and demonstrates interest in the STEM fields. There you go. Okay, so, oh, that's, that looks great. So in our flow chart here, you'll see that um, starting in the eighth grade, students have a couple of different options of how they want to pursue their science career here in Wata. The great thing is, as they enter ninth grade, they're completing both uh, regents courses maybe in a different sequence but once they get to 10th grade they're actually pretty much at the same point where they have a lot of different choices and this is important because students develop differently right some students they gain a love of science as they mature and also with with COVID in the last two years of awfulness and disruption you know students definitely develop their interests at different times Right, but the benefit, the benefit of our course structure allows students to take different paths but have similar choices in 10th grade. In grade 10, students have the opportunity to take two levels of chemistry. Additionally, additionally next year we'll have a new course. It's called Matter and Energy. And this course serves as a foundational class for students who wish to take chemistry in 11th grade. So basically the course itself will provide many of the next generation science standards and physical science for students who maybe not 100% not confident to take chemistry in 10th grade, right? And in 11th grade, students have a wide selection of AP courses, college accredited courses, and science electives. Go there. Oop, sorry. I didn't know you put the animation. But thank you. All right, so in terms of our AP courses, we have five of them. AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Environmental Science, AP Phys Physics One, which is algebra-based, and then we have a new course, AP Physics C, which is calculus-based, and that will go hand-in-hand -hand with our AP Calculus course, which should be fantastic. Okay, we have two different science uh, college-accredited courses. We have Anatomy and Physiology, which is accredited through St. John's University, and we have Forensics, which is accredited through Syracuse University. Okay, and in terms of electives, we have science research, introduction to forensics, advanced agriculture, conceptual physics, sports science, bioethics, and marine science, which also has um, an option for accreditation through Malloy College, or Malloy University now, excuse me. Okay. And moving on to mathematics, which is super exciting. Sorry. Uh, the mathematic courses offered at Wanta High School are designed to give students. A what happened? Oh, that's weird. I'm sorry. I apologize. It did it on its own. So, the mathematics courses offered at Wanta High School are designed to give students a useful and enjoyable experience in mathematics. One of the major goals is to generate critical thinking skills and enable students to apply their knowledge of mathematics in order to analyze and solve unfamiliar problems in the real world today. The wide range of courses, of courses provides students with an opportunity to proceed at their own pace and ach achieve success. Okay, sorry. So here's our flowchart for mathematics. So in ninth grade, if students are currently in geometry in ninth grade, students will take algebra two in tenth grade, and they can also concurrently take or enroll in AP statistics if they wish. In grade eleven, there are several different pathways, including two levels of precalculus. Uh, one level is college precalculus, which is accredited through Malloy University, and that will prepare students for AB calculus as seniors. We also offer AP precalculus, which is new, and this will prepare students for BC calculus in grade 12. 
So just if you haven't been in college in a while, and I'll explain it, AP Calculus AB is the first semester of a traditional calculus course. AP Calculus BC are the first two semesters of a traditional calculus course. So one is a little more rigorous than the other. Current ninth graders taking algebra will take geometry in 10th grade. In 11th grade, students may take Algebra 2, which leads to many excellent choices as seniors. Um, we offer advanced placement courses in statistics and pre-calculus. Additionally, we offer college-accredited courses of algebra and trigonometry and pre-calculus in Malloy University. For students who want to take extra support before taking Algebra 2, we offer advanced algebra. We also have business mathematics as seniors. Um, one thing I do want to point out if you look under the Regents Level courses, there's um, the letters R or H, and R stands for a Regents Level course, H stands for an Honors course. The way our structure here in WANTA is designed is that sometimes students develop their strengths and loves or interest in mathematics a little bit later. So if your student had started in Math 8, and they gradually progress and now they feel that they want to challenge themselves if they're in algebra in ninth grade and really are doing well in algebra and they want to challenge themselves they have the opportunity to go into an, an honors level geometry course in 10th grade a lot of school districts I don't want to call it tracking but students some some sometimes get pigeonholed with scheduling um, our course structure in Wata allows for that flexibility which is terrific okay. now to technology so next I'm going to talk about some outstanding technology uh, courses. Um, the vision of the technology department is to provide a multidisciplinary classroom experience that allows students to apply their passion for hands-on experiences in order to collaborate, problem solve, and engage in critical and innovative thinking. So, as students enter 10th grade, they have several options. We offer materials processing, where students learn woodworking skills, including building and finishing products. We also have basic car care, where students get hands-on experiences in maintaining and repairing vehicles. We have robotics, where students learn about machine automation and computer control systems by building and programming their own VEX robots. We have a new course called Power Sports and Equipment Repair, where students assemble and diagnose and repair uh, mini bikes and power and marine equipment, which is going to be awesome. Um, and students also have the opportunity to take an intro introduction course uh, to AP Computer Science, where they learn state-of-the-art coding languages, including Java and Python. So I have a lot of notes. Yeah. And then we'll talk about um, our PLTW program for grades uh, 10 and 11. We have uh, Principles of Engineering, which leads to Civil Engineering. Both courses are engaging and challenging. Principles of Engineering exposes students to uh, mechanisms, materials, structures, automation, and motion, while Civil Engineering students will learn important aspects of building and site design and development. Through successful completion of any PLTW course, including the end of the course assessments, students have the opportunity to earn credit through the Rochester Institute of Technology. Okay. Sorry. And that's. Thank you for your time. That's it for me. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce our curriculum director for fine and performing arts and business ed um, education, Ms. Kelly Jones. Do you want the mic in the stand? Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Hello, everyone. So um, on to art, on to the, the really exciting and fun part of, of every student's day. Um, every student in high school um, is required to have at least one arts credit for graduation. Um, and in most cases, um, the ninth graders are currently enrolled in that requirement course, um, either in studio and art, um, studio media, or our uh, project lead the way, um, design, drawing, uh, drafting and design. So those are our foundation courses, and like I said, most of the time, students accomplish that one credit as a ninth grader. But in art, uh, the foundation courses, as you can see, really lead to a, a whole host of very rigorous and really actually um, 
quite fun uh, art electives. Um, once the foundation course is completed, students can go down any art of their chosen medium uh, in fine art, photography, or um, media and digital or art history. Uh, many of the courses listed do have prerequisites, so please make sure you check the curriculum guide to make sure that you uh, plan out your courses so you can get as many um, art credits and art electives um, from that vast uh, list that we have um, up there. Um, as you can see, each category of art culminates in an AP course, um, and we are also really excited to be offering our second year of AP studio in ceramics. Um, our ceramics lab um, is, has become quite uh, popular at the high school. Um, we have a beautiful new room uh, where students are able to uh, create in a 3D form and um, fire and, and get all of their uh, ceramics fired in our kiln. Um, it's really become a very popular course and we're very excited to again offer that uh, ceramics course that also leads to that 3D AP course. Um, but you can also mix and match uh, courses with, with against um, within the mediums. Um, if you take a foundations course, that foundation course really gives you um, all of your foundational skills in uh, the elements and principles of design. So they really structure those courses to be able to allow you to move within the other courses down below um, once you have completed that foundations course. Um, we also have our yearbook production class, which we encourage our um, 11th to 12th graders to participate in and, and have a hand in creating our yearbook uh, yearly publication. Um, and then the course that's really um, an interesting one for that's unique for WANTA is our comprehensive art. Um, this course really allows students to pursue their individual art. Uh, they're able to really uh, hone in and, and focus on their own medium of choice. Um, it's very indi individualized to each student. Um, they're able to, um, you know, if they're really passionate about watercolor or if they wanted to dabble in um, other types of st uh, structural um, 3D work, um, they can take that time in that course and build a portfolio and have that carry with them forever. So um, that introduction, uh, that I'm sorry, that comprehensive course is really unique um, and we're very proud of it to be able to offer that um, opportunity for students really to work in a setting and develop their own uh, medium um, and with the help of and guidance from a teacher um, really to just foster their own love of art. So that's our art program. And we go on to music. So um, here are our performance-based music offerings. The majority of music uh, students in ninth grade um, enter into that first level course, which is concert band, chorale, or symphonic orchestra. Um, band is the only ensemble that does have that middle level group for 10th to 12th graders, which is symphonic band. Chorus and orchestra keep their uh, ninth through 12th grade students together in chorale and symphonic orchestra, but every student is encouraged to practice and audition for our honors level ensembles. These courses are audition-based and are very rigorous. They're considered college level um, and are weighted as such. Um, and audition materials um, are going to be coming out. So if you do have an interest in auditioning for those um, higher level um, courses, please see uh, your band director or orchestra, uh, Mrs. Delmonica, um, uh, Ms. Cassidy for course, and Mr. Avilas, and they will make sure that you get that audition material uh, right away so you can audition and, um, and, and, work and earn your way into those ensembles. Um, so those are our ensemble based. And then we do offer three non-ensemble based courses, uh, music theory, AP music theory, and audio engineering. Uh, music theory is for any student who would like to um, understand the basis and mechanics of mu music composition. Um, these students are then encouraged to continue on to our AP music course um, in, after taking uh, theory one. So we would take theory one, which is really our foundations um, introductory course to theory, and then we encourage students to then sit for and um, place into the AP theory class. Um, audio engineering course is teaching the students through the use of technology how to create and manipulate music through software like ProLogic and Pro Tools. Uh, this software is what is considered industry standard in the music production world, and we offer that in our state-of-the-art lab right here in Wanta. Um, it's just a great, great space. Uh, has a full uh, complement of Macintosh computers and keyboards and a, a mixing board, and it's just, um, it's really something special that we have here, and we encourage students to really get involved with that um, other aspect of music creation uh, through the digital world. Dance. Um, we are going to be in our second year of offering a choreography and dance course here at the high school. Um, this will be a full year, every other day course. 
Um, and the focus uh, on skills needed to design and create a dance performance piece while understanding the mechanisms that go into successful performance, you know, such as co collaboration, presentation, and research. Uh, this course will culminate in a dance performance at the end of the school year. And we're, we are, again, excited to be able to offer this avenue for our dancers um, here in Wanta. Business. So um, we redesigned our business uh, courses last year, and we're thrilled um, with the success that we are seeing. Um, we have new courses. Again, um, the two that were introduced and will be following up again next year are our ninth grade offerings of foundations and, and business communications. But those are also open to any ninth, uh, ninth through twelfth grade student, um, and we encourage to take those foundational courses um, in business. But we do um, once you have completed or um, taken those foundations courses, we have three strands of business. We have business administration, finance, and marketing. And you can see within those, we have um, a, an array of courses um, that each um, is specialized within those strands. Uh, let's see. So once you take those two foundational courses, uh, you can go down any strand, but you do not have to stay within that strand. You can mix and match because those foundation courses have really built a, a well-rounded repertoire of what uh, the business world is, is, is leading to. So if you uh, sat for foundations and then you wanted to do our business law class but also wanted to go into accounting, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you check that curriculum guide to make sure that you're, you're meeting all the prerequisites and you plan out your business plan accordingly. Um, it, we do, as a matter of fact, encourage you to mix and match to make sure that you have a well-rounded um, avenue um, headed out into the business world, whether it be going on to business school or into the workforce. Um, next year, we will be offering international business, and, um, and we will take a pause on the global economy class. We're going to run those every other year so students have an access to both of those courses, and they are both college level um, that, that do come with college credit. So next year will be international business and not the global economy because that is running this school year. Okay. Thank you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any of the teachers. The structure and foundation of physical education is to promote a healthy lifestyle and encourage positive behaviors. We offer numerous options within the course for student choice and engagement, as well as fostering lifelong fitness and wellness. Health is a required course for all students and must be taken in either 11th or 12th grade. Our health course covers the makeup of the human body and its functions while enforcing the key concepts of properly maintaining and promoting a healthy lifestyle in a continually changing environment. There is a premise of developing positive behaviors with an emphasis on eliminating behaviors that negatively affect a healthy lifestyle and place an individual or individuals at risk. For the first time in this coming year, health can be taken either for a semester course every day or for a full year every other day. The course that your child goes into will be based on their specific schedule availability and is an option that we have put in to try and give the students more um, options for elective classes just to make uh, a little bit more room for them. At this time, I am going to introduce Mr. Musio. Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Musio. I'm the Director of Family Consumer Sciences and the Guidance Department. Um, in speaking of the Family Consumer Science Department, the best way I could describe it is that it is experiential learning. Uh, students learn to cook by cooking. Uh, they learn uh, how to shop on a budget. Uh, they learn uh, a repertoire of meals. And that's really one of our goals, is that students who go through our program, if they go through more than one of the culinary programs, uh, they will have a repertoire of meals that they can make when they are in college or on their own. Uh, but they understand also, it's experiential, so they, they start to understand through discussions of the roles of the parent in our child development strand. They begin to understand theories and practices related to uh, child development and adolescent development. They uh, understand what it's like to work as a team. Now let me describe something to you. In a 40 minute period, students will uh, receive a little instruction, they'll receive a demonstration, then they'll be split into four groups, four kitchens, about uh, five or six students in each of the kitchens. They'll create a meal and they'll clean the whole place before the bell rings. 
It's amazing. And that doesn't happen without teamwork. And it's one of those classes that we have here. I think physical education might be the only other place where we really work together as teams like that. Uh, so they begin to have this understanding. I use the word understanding a lot because I, I see the light bulb go off in a lot of our students when they're doing these kinds of things. We have something in our child development strand uh, we call the play group. And what the play group is, and you see the picture up there, is uh, we have students from the community, I should say children from the community, preschoolers, who come in with their caregivers, and they're paired with our students in our child development classes, our adolescent development classes, and our college level child development classes. And um, through this hands-on experiences, uh, our students can see firsthand uh, language acquisition and motor skill acquisition and separation anxiety. And these theories then come to life and students really understand them. So it's really exciting to see that. As, as you can see by the screen, we do have two strands, the culinary arts program. We start our ninth graders off with the um, culinary foundations course. Although that course is not uh, exclusive to ninth graders, if, if students haven't taken it and they would like to as 10th graders, they may. Uh, creative cuisine and uh, international gourmet uh, are our 10 through 12 courses. And our master chef and food and nutrition, we get a little bit more sophisticated in 11th and 12th grade. And we start talking about uh, how students might fend for themselves in college. Uh, uh, the creative cuisine course, just to touch upon that, um, it used to be called baking, and um, we got away from a lot of the sweets, and the most popular, or, or favorite, I should say, uh, lab this year was roasted vegetables. And I didn't believe it, so I had to go down there and see for myself, and the kids were all raving about this, this roasted vegetable uh, you know, a meal that they made. So we're really trying to get students to understand, again, uh, how nutrition plays a part in their overall health, how they can make healthy meals for themselves and do it in a fun way. Uh, that is our uh, family consumer science program. Okay, and now I'd like to introduce Dr. Maura Lachance, our uh, supervisor of special ed. Thank you. So yes, my name is Dr. Maura Lachance. I'm the supervisor for special education here. Um, at Wanto, we have a wide variety of programs and services to meet all the needs of our students with special needs. Um, the CSE, or Committee on Special Education, individualizes each student's IEP, or Individualized Education Program, to ensure that each student receives specialized instruction tailored to their unique strengths and needs. Um, all decisions regarding special education will be made at your child's upcoming CSE meeting um, in late winter, early spring, if your child already has an IEP. Um, we have a wide variety of um, services here. We have some, we have occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, um, parent counseling and training, as well as counseling for the students. Um, we have several programs offered as well, such as resource room, um, again, these are all IEP-driven services. Resource room is when your child is scheduled for one period a day where they meet with um, a special education teacher and they just target the skills that are need improvement, um, again, as indicated on their IEP. Um, we also have integrated co-teaching, where as a general education teacher and a special education teacher co-teach together. Um, students with and without IEPs are in this class, so whether your, your child has an IEP or not, they might have had the opportunity and the benefit of being in ICT. Um, we also offer small special classes, whereas the class size is capped, and this is only taught by a special education teacher. Um, it's really wonderful that we do have a hybrid option as well. There could be students that have some subjects where they're in ICT and some subjects where they're in a small special class. This is dependent on um, their IEP and the logistics of the schedule, but it is um, available. We also offer a variety of um, accommodations and modifications. Um, this is really to increase the success of your child um, and also just to ensure equal access to the curriculum. Um, we also offer test accommodations. This is, again, IEP-driven, whereas we want to be able to showcase and we want your child to be able to demonstrate the skills and attainment of knowledge without being limited by the effects of the disability. So for example, if a student has limited visual acuity, 
They might have large um, font as an accommodation. Um, and also, they might have extended time or something like that on, on assessments. And again, this is all IEP-driven um, services. We also have 504 plans. Um, this is also to ensure equal access. And on 504 plans, usually you'll see test accommodations or program modifications and accommodations. Um, if your child has an IEP or if your child might be getting an IEP and you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. You could email me or call me, or you could also reach out to the building psychologist and they'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, so at this point, I could bring it back over to Dr. Frank Muzio. Okay. Okay. Uh, the guidance program. Uh, the guidance program, if I could sum that up, would be our mission is to prepare your student for the next phase of their life. Whether that be college, whether that be career, um, military, whatever. Um, they come into us uh, in ninth grade, and uh, by the time they uh, reach uh, 12th grade, we want them to have some kind of a post high school plan. And we do that through a variety of methods. As you can see, we have a lot of in-school programs and we have a lot of evening programs. Uh, but I think, and we're heavily involved in the scheduling process as we're about to get to. But I think we achieve that goal mostly through personal counseling. Now, personal counseling is when a student comes into the guidance office, and by the way, we don't make appointments. Students don't make appointments with us if we're available and the student is available, we, we have a conversation. Now, uh, that conversation can range from career ed, it can be a personal issue, and sometimes it's just having the student and the counselor have a connection. And I can't emphasize that enough. The more that the student comes down to the guidance office, meets with the counselor, even on a casual basis, uh, the more that counselor is going to be able to direct that student in terms of course offerings, in terms of college choices, and, and write a, an even more enhanced letter the more that they know the students. So we do uh, ask students to visit us as often as they can. Now, if a student comes down every day during math class, we're going to send them to class. So it's not like that. But uh, we will say to the student, if you have a study hall, if you have a lunch period, after school, before school, whatever the case may be, we want to see them and we welcome them you know, to our offices. Um, but we do have, as you can see, a variety of evening programs. Um, our freshman parent meetings just concluded, um, but we will have sophomore parent meetings later on in May. And uh, our sophomore college night is March 28th. It's on our district calendar, mark your calendars for that. And we get that process started in a very slow way and get the students' feet wet into, into college planning. Now this month, in this room, starting on January 24th, I'm going to begin a four-part evening program uh, for juniors and their parents. And we go through everything. We start with the SAT and ACT. We end with financial aid and everything in the, in the middle. We discuss terminology. We, we discuss chronology. And we discuss uh, how colleges evaluate students. So uh, not to be missed. We're going to start uh, on uh, Tuesday. January 24th at 7 p.m. right here. Uh, and following those conferences, we will have junior conferences where parents are invited into the building and we have a sit down with the counselor and it's, it's very specific towards the needs of the student and the family in terms of college admissions. Okay. Okay, let me touch upon vocational education. And this is really geared towards our 10th graders because uh, should they choose a vocational program for 11th grade, they would spend half the day in a BOCE center and half the day here in Wanto High School and the same with their senior year, it's two year programs. And they, are, uh, they range from automotive technology and cosmetology and trade electricity and culinary arts and uh, there's a host of programs. And so I would say if uh, you, as a student in the room or a parent, you're interested in a vocational program, uh, to please contact me by email or phone. We can discuss it, and then we'll have that interview. That has to take place 
prior to March 1st of this year so that we can, we can have that application submitted to BOCES. Okay. Where are we now? Ah, uh, the course catalog. <laughs> uh, you sure? Yeah, sure? Okay. Mr. Nick Pappas, our assistant principal. Good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. I just wanted to touch up on a couple of things briefly. Um, I want to thank all the directors and supervisors for presenting their programs to you guys. Um, my role in the process here, um, obviously, if you didn't um, catch everything because there was a lot of information thrown at you, uh, you could always uh, look on the, the district website and access the course catalog here. If you go up to About Wanto High School, click on Course Offerings and click on the curriculum guide. It'll bring you to um, you know, a PDF where you could uh, click on some hot links. You could uh, see some videos that teachers made about their courses and programs uh, to get some more information uh, in case we missed anything this evening. So um, last month in December, uh, the window opened for teachers to begin recommending courses for your children for the following year. That window did actually close uh, today. So teachers uh, in grades 9, 10, and 11 did finalize recommendations for uh, students in their classes. Uh, be on the lookout. Uh, tomorrow or the next day, we'll be sending out some information to you guys because we will be opening up that uh, access for you to be able to see what students were recommended for by their teachers. Um, so you could access all of that information through, par uh, through the parent portal and in Infinite Campus. At that point, um, you know, it, what's, what's common is that students are recommended for more than what they can take. You know, we do have a nine period day, but if kids, if, if students are recommended for 12 or 13 periods worth of courses, they have to, you know, narrow down that list to a, to a nine period day. And then that's really where the work comes in between the counselors and the students. So um, as students do begin to meet with their counselors, you'll see that, uh, that list of recommendations uh, diminish, right? Um, so you'll get a much clearer picture of, of what that conversation looks like between the, your child and their counselor. If you do happen to have an eighth grader, uh, what, that, what that will look like is a, much, uh, is a default of uh, ninth grade courses. Uh, that's not 100% accurate right now because the window for middle school teachers to begin the recommendation process will begin next week. So um, what you'll see in, uh, for a rising ninth grader is um, uh, English 9R, Earth Science, Algebra, and Global 1R. Um, that will obviously change as students meet with their counselors in the middle school. But I just wanted to let you know that because I don't know how many of you have um, students or children in eighth grade as well. So if you toggle between both kids, you'll actually um, see both of their recommendations in Infinite Campus Portal. Um, once that's all finalized and all of the recommendations are, are kind of solidified with counselors, that's when, you know, that's where I start working um, as the assistant principal and I build the master schedule for the high school. I'll take all of those requests and I'll build the schedule. Um, but at that point, we enter kind of what we call a frozen period where um, decisions, uh, any changes don't really happen as I, as I build. Um, and that is, uh, we do give about a one week window before February break. Um, we communicate with you in February as well, um, where we tell you these are the courses that your child requested after they met with their counselor. If there are any changes, please let us know by this date. Um, and if we don't hear from you or your child by that, di by that date, um, I start building. Um, and at that point, if there are any, any changes, um, they, they, um, there, there are no guarantees, but um, uh, I will start building, and the, um, the schedule is finalized around May or June. And, and, at, and at that point, if there are, you know, if there are any changes that kids want to make, um, again, they, like I said, there's no guarantees, um, but there is, you know, there's, there's a possibility that they may be able to take the course that they want. Um, and, you know, so we communicate with you along the way. Again, this week, be on the lookout for some communication uh, regarding the recommendations. In February, you'll get a notification about what uh, your child requested, and in June, you'll get another uh, notification as to what your child is scheduled for. Um, before I end this evening, I do want to, um, you know, reintroduce Dr. Gazone, and I wanted to thank you all for your participation here uh, this evening, and I, again, I wanted to thank the directors for all of their um, programs that they run and uh, for all the opportunities they give to the kids here. Uh, have a good night for me. 
Uh, I just want to wrap up uh, by first highlighting our, our parent organizations. Uh, each one of them serve a, a special purpose for our students uh, within this building and this community. So I really encourage uh, each of you to get involved with um, a parent organization. Uh, if it's if it's not the uh, the bandwagon, the booster club, SEPTA, there's. They're all fantastic, and they all do great things for our kids. So uh, if you haven't joined an organization yet, I really implore you to because uh, they really help highlight and, and raise the level of the experience that our, our students uh, see and, and go through every single day. Um, so with that, that is our formal presentation. I do have about five minutes for, qu for questions, if people have questions. No questions is okay, too. Yes, all the way in the back. Um, for next year, for the next calendar, year, are there any trips that are planned for the next year? Yeah, there are. Uh, every year, our departments do plan trips. Our, uh, our music and our art department, uh, they plan trips. Uh, you're talking about, like, yeah, you're talking about, uh, but not like a trip to the museum, right? You're, you're, you're talking about overseas or on an airplane. Uh, yes. So um, what I would share is uh, I would reach out to Ms. Jones, Ms. Kelly Jones. Uh, she really is the person kind of like oversees most of our trips that go on planes. Um, so uh, reach out to her, and she could definitely give you some more information on that. Okay? Because not all of it's finalized, so she could kind of give you some ideas on, on what might be happening. Okay. All right. Uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Every every student. Yep. Uh, that starts soon. We have a whole calendar planned. Um, Mr. Muzio, uh, he may have stepped out, but uh, that's. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Sorry. Yep, and, and just in terms of the portal, so when you get that letter uh, that the parent portal, the academic planner, you'll be able to see the uh, teacher recommendations. Uh, you will see them, and then what, when your child meets with their counselor, that's live time. So when your child meets with their counselor and they make maybe adjustments and changes to the, to the potential schedule, the very second that your child leaves that, that meeting, you can go in and you can see what changes were made. Uh, and that's going to be live and open pretty much for most of the scheduling process, but we do shut that down at some point uh, because when we start scheduling, uh, we kind of like, we shut down the ship until like we have the, the, the matrix kind of completed and then we send out more information. Okay. Uh, yes? Um, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Muzio, he's shaking his head. The, so the, for the people at home, the question was, is there a list of colleges uh, that accept uh, which AP courses? Um, Mr. Muzio, yeah, uh, what I would if you want to speak into the mic, Mr. Muzio, just so people could hear. Sure. The, uh, the, the college itself will make those kinds of policies. And so uh, we ask students to prepare for things like college fairs and say, I want to see, let's say, Binghamton or Oneonta or something like that and see if they will take the specific college course that I'm planning to enroll in. That would be really the best bet. There is no actual list because colleges really make their own rules and they change them. So I, I really couldn't advise you on, the, on a specific type of list. But if you know the kind of, let's say, college course that your child would like to take and you think you have a college in mind, the best thing to do is communicate that to the college. Um, another question in the back. Yes. So um, we have an internal calendar, what I mentioned. But what will happen is we will send out communication with clear deadlines of, uh, of that are important for you our families to be aware of and, and know. So when you see that letter, uh, the letter will say something like, uh, the, this is the, these are the recommendations that uh, go to the parent portal. You'll see the teacher recommendations. Uh, please know meetings are ongoing. Uh, final 
uh, course selections will be on this date and time. So we will be very clear as, to, as in terms of what the deadlines are. Uh, we don't want anyone kind of like guessing or in the dark. And on, on, on for, our, for us too, you know, we want it to be very clear in the sense that if someone comes in like a week later trying to change it, we want to be able to say, hey, well, we, we tried to communicate with you, but we can't, Mr. Pappas can't build a schedule with uh, moving, moving courses. So uh, we will be very clear as far as those deadlines. Yes. The question is, um, are there any more college fairs scheduled? So uh, Mr. Muzio shared that there are no more uh, Wanto High School college fairs um, planned, but there is a, a larger one coming in April, and he'll push that information out. And again, I'm, I'm repeating the questions just because I have people, uh, families at home, and they can't hear the questions. I have time for about one or maybe two more. Okay, seeing none, it's 7.30, and this portion has ended perfect timing, and we will be shortly moving into our 8 into 9 presentation. Thank you, everybody. For those streaming at home, we will be starting in about three minutes. Okay, three minutes.
Okay, we're about ready to start our, our 8 into 9 presentation. So um, if you are in the auditorium, if you could just take a seat, that would be great. Uh, it's okay, I can use this. Okay. So uh, I would like to welcome everybody to tonight's 8 into 9 presentation. I am Dr. Paul Gazone, and I am the proud principal of Wanta High School. This is my uh, officially uh, my, my third year here at the high school. Uh, I'm very excited because it's the first year I hopefully I, 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 I can go throughout the year and not have to change dates and, and send out communication that people don't like, right? So uh, it's, it's been great so far. And... Uh, Welcome to Wanto High School, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic vacation, a, a fantastic break. Um, there is a lot to be excited about. I also think when you're coming into uh, a new place, uh, a, a new building, there's a level of uh, you know anxiety, um, nervousness, and, and all of those things. Right? Uh, it doesn't matter where you are or how experienced you are. If, uh, if you're a parent of a child who's already in the high school and you're still nervous for the, the child that's coming into the high school, you know what I want to assure everybody is that uh, Wanto High School is a uh, it's a very special place. Um, you know, I think one of the strengths of Wanto High School is that our, our teachers and our, our faculty, they all care, right? There's, there's no doubt about that. They care about their students. Uh, they care about their families. Um, and if I had to rank one of, the, you know, our top quality in our building, I would say it's that we care more than anything. And I'd work in any building that cares because you can't really teach caring. So uh, for those of you who are coming in for the first time, um, we will take great care of, of your children, and we will take great care of you as well. Okay? Um, oh, yeah, okay. The round of applause. <laughs> All right. Um, just really quick up here, this is the list of uh, administrators for this building. Our directors, our um, assistant principals, and, and our special education supervisors. Um, you know, I'm not going to, a lot of them will be speaking tonight. I just wanted you to see the names. Uh, if you have, after tonight's presentation, if you have unanswered questions, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to them. Uh, they're very responsive. They will uh, answer your question uh, in a very short, short time. Okay. I missed something. Okay, all right. So um, on this slide, there's a lot of data. Um, I'm a big data guy, if you, if you don't know me, okay? Um, but what I want, I'm really going to highlight three pieces of information I think that are really important. Um, and I think that part of what I want you to know coming into the high school is, you know, what we, what we value and we strive for is to ensure that every student, by the time they leave high school, they're able to, you know, be creative thinkers, uh, be able to critically think, uh, communicate, and collaborate at a high level, right? Um, above all, above content, what matters most in terms of long-term success are, are, are those areas. And uh, that's something that I think we, we pride ourselves in. And one of the numbers I really want to share is the, uh, you know, 90% of our students of our graduating class of 2022 uh, took at least one college or AP level course. Uh, if, if there are courses where you need to demonstrate those skills and those abilities, it's, at, it's courses that are tied to college level curriculum or AP level curriculum. And 90% of our graduating class did just that over their four years at Wanto High School last year, uh, which I think is a tremendous achievement. Um, I firmly believe that there is at least one college course for every single child or AP uh, exam for a course for every single child in this building by the time they graduate. Uh, if you're saying, oh, my child will never do it, they, will, they won't take it, I'm telling you, there, there is. There's at least one. Uh, and if you're not sure what it is, come talk to us. We'll, we'll find it along the way. Um, that's something that I'm proud of. Uh, the next thing I want to highlight is really what's in this box. So when you look in this box, uh, you see that 94.5% uh, 94 of our students return for a second year of college, where the national average is 76%. 77.5% um, of our students complete a degree within six years. That's, that's, and the national average is 61%. Now, uh, respectfully, those show differences of about what, like 18 and a half and, and 16 and a half. But from a different perspective and a different lens, uh, what, this really, what this really means is that just simply by being a student of Wanta High School and graduate, graduating in four years, your child is 25% more likely than another college student, uh, high school graduate in this country to A, um, return to her second year of college, 
and B, to earn their degree within four years, uh, six years, 25% more likely. Now, that, that's a substantial and significant number and something that we, uh, you know, I know that we're proud of as being educators. And, uh, and I think as, as community members, you should be proud of that, uh, that statistic and data too. Um, I think a lot of times when, when schools do their, their curriculum nights, they kind of highlight, hey, this is where our kids are going to school. And, and look, we have a lot of that too, and that's great. But me personally, what I think tells the story more is not where our students are going but what they actually do when they get there right and what this shows is that they they actually return to their second year of college and not only that but they they get, they get their degrees so that's something that we should all be proud of um, now with that I'm going to introduce Dr. Women he's one of our assistant principals over here uh, he will be talking about uh, briefly about some of our new courses thank you thank you Dr. Gazone welcome everybody thank you for coming out tonight um, let's see, okay. Uh, what I'd like to highlight right now, what you see on the screen right now are the new additions to our course offerings that will be available to our students in September 2023. Uh, the majority of these courses are not available are not available for our incoming ninth graders, I don't think. Uh, but we want to let you know that there are courses that your children can look forward to in the years to come. We also want to make sure you know that we're constantly updating our programs based on the needs and interests of our students and that over the years, there will be plenty of revisions to ensure we're providing your children with the best experience possible. Okay, so uh, we do have a couple of high-end math classes for upper-level uh, kids, students. Uh, in social studies, we're introducing a new uh, American pop culture course. Um, later on, they'll be talking, when they do some of the flow charts for some of the uh, other departments, you'll see where matter and energy and the power sports and small engine repair uh, course fit in. Uh, but again, we're always retweaking our college our course catalog to make sure that we're offering a wide variety of things for our students. And so over the course of their four years here, there'll be ample opportunity for the children to be uh, involved in a bunch of courses that will meet their interests and their desires. Um, the other thing we're really proud of is the amount of things that we offer uh, as far as interscholastic uh, athletic teams, as well as the clubs and other things we offer here at uh, Wantor High School. We have over 40 different clubs that provide just about everything for everybody uh, and a bunch of other co-curricular activities, which you'll see on the right there, uh, which allow children to explore their passions in music, theater, journalism, and student government. And as I said before, we do offer a variety of athletic, pro of athletic interscholastic athletic teams uh, which uh, compete at a very high level and at the same time offer a wide variety of athletic opportunities for students. <clears throat> um, when your child comes uh, for freshman orientation in August, they will have an opportunity uh, to be introduced to all these extracurricular activities and gain more insight into each activity. The other thing I'd like to highlight, uh, which is something that as students go progress through the high school here, is that we're proud here at Wantar is that we are able to recognize those students uh, who achieve at the highest level through our many different honor societies. They recognize high academic achievement and leadership as well as departmental specific honor societies uh, that recognize students who excel in specific academic disciplines. It's important for your child to know that the clock for membership on the, on the, in these organizations starts to begin uh, as soon as they enter ninth grade. Uh, and so they can work in, on their resume and they can uh, find an interest in a variety of different departmental honor societies. And then in 11th grade, uh, when they can apply for and achieve um, membership into the National Honor Society. Uh, and so that's all I have on that. Uh, now uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gazon. Am I? No, no, no. I'm done. Yeah. I, I, I know. I don't. I don't hog the mic. Okay. So. Um, I am not Miss Rossley, but uh, unfortunately, Miss Rossley was not able to make it tonight. She is feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, Miss Rossley is our director of English, reading, uh, social studies, and, and world language. Uh, we did offer to step in and do her presentation for her, but um, she is a real trooper, and she made a, uh, a video to uh, to share with all of you because she wanted to, you to hear her voice and and hear her her story for her departments. So, give me one second.
Good evening, and thank you for your attendance tonight. My name is Julie Rossley, and I'm the Director of Humanities for the Wontaw School District. I apologize for not being able to present in person, but I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some information about the humanities programs here at Wontaw High School. The teachers in the English and Reading Departments of Wontaw High School seek to enhance students' reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills, and to further their appreciation and understanding of literature and communication. We encourage students to think critically and creatively by exploring a variety of authors, genres, and mediums, and by challenging each learner to read, analyze, and discuss the words of others. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence of English and to pass the English Regents exam in 11th grade. As freshmen, students may take either English 9R or English 9 Honors. Each of these courses builds off of the reading and writing skills taught in 8th grade. Additionally, students may enroll in semester-long English electives as well as support classes to strengthen their reading fluency, comprehension, and writing skills. As you can see from this flowchart, students are not tracked in English, so they may choose to move from Regents level to Honors level or vice versa from year to year. This flexibility holds true in social studies and world languages as well. Please be aware that the rigor of each level increases or decreases substantially based on the level your child is enrolled in. If you have any questions about levels, please feel free to speak with your child's teacher or with me. The goal of the Wanta High School Social Studies Department is to prepare students for college, careers, and civic life with courses that are rigorous and aligned to the New York State Learning Standards for Social Studies. Social Studies is intended to promote civic competence through the integrated study of social sciences and humanities. The primary purpose of Social Studies is to help young people develop the ability to make informed and reasoned decisions for the public good as citizens of a culturally diverse, democratic society in an independent world. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence in Social Studies. That sequence is Global History 1 or Pre-AP World History and Geography in ninth grade, Global History 2, AP World History Modern or AP European History in 10th grade, U.S. History in 11th grade, and Government and Economics in 12th grade. There are Social Studies Regents exams in 10th and 11th grades. These exams correlate with the material taught in those grades. The Wanta High School Social Studies Department takes pride in its philosophy and practices of challenging students intellectually in an academically stimulating environment. With that in mind, the Social Studies Department offers a four-year sequence of AP offerings for students who wish to challenge themselves throughout their high school careers. When students enter the high school, they continue their coursework with the target language selected in sixth grade. Throughout the four years of high school world languages study, each student has the opportunity to enroll in Regents, Honors, College, or AP level courses, depending on the student's grade level and if the student meets the entry criteria for each of the courses. In each of the world language courses, students engage in learning new vocabulary, conjugating verbs, discovering cultural similarities and differences, and understanding diversity. As ninth and 10th graders, students prepare for the Checkpoint B exam, which is administered in June of the 10th grade. Students enrolled in ENL classes receive core content area and English language development instruction to enrich communication and comprehension. Mm -hmm. Should you have any questions about any of these courses or opportunities I have highlighted this evening, please consult the curriculum guide or contact me. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Christopher Kozak, Director of STEM. Okay, uh, before I, I hand off to uh, Mr. Kozak, 
Just uh, two things I want to quickly highlight. This this uh, presentation is being live streamed and it is being recorded. So uh, if you're taking notes and you feel like you missed something, you know, please know like by tomorrow afternoon. If you go to the Wontaw High School web uh, web page, the, the actual high school web page, you know those little yellow dots that the middle school has and now the high school. We created a, a yellow dot for our live streams. So you, it's, it's it's like a little camera with a yellow dot. Just click on that, and that's where that will take you to like the the district um, uh, live stream channel. And you you should see um, at that point. I think tomorrow, like a, a high school uh, folder, for, and this tonight's presentation will will be in there. Um, another thing that I, I really want to share with all of you as as freshman families is um, I don't know if you picked up on this, but uh, we worked a lot over the last couple of years. But in our humanities department, when you looked at those flow charts, what you didn't see was lines, right? You you didn't see lines of you know here's you know you're in nine eight, so you go to ten H. Right, you didn't go. You're not in 10H. You go to AP U.S. History, and I know that seems small, but it's really not. And it's really representative of what we believe. Uh, the purpose of not showing lines is because we believe students develop at different levels uh, and at different ages. So if we have a child who is in English and uh, or soul studies or one language, and uh, they are in the 10R section, and they all of a sudden become a, a strong student in that area. There's no, there's no restriction to say that they can't challenge and go into a uh, honors or AP level course in their 11th grade year. If they are going into a, a regents level course in ninth grade, again, no lines, right? If, if your child all of a sudden finds their stride and becomes like a 95 student at the regents level, we can, we can get them into that, that honors level. And that's something that is uh, unique and we're very proud of. Uh, so if it looked a little weird, it's because we wanted it to look that way to let you know that you know, there really are no boundaries here, uh, especially in those areas. I think in science and math, it's a little different because you accelerate at the eighth grade level. So if you're already taking um, you know, algebra one in eighth grade, you, you, there's no skipping, uh, but you know, there's tons of opportunities for students to travel back and forth between honors and, and, and regions level courses here at the high school. I just wanted to highlight that. I think it's something that's important for you to know. With that, Mr. Kozak. Good evening. I don't have as great of a reading voice as Miss Rossley, <laughs> but I'll do my best. She was fantastic. Uh, my name is Christopher Kozak. I'm the director of STEM. Um, I'm going to walk you through our science and math courses, which can be boring. So I put a, uh, this GIF up here is our sus uh, sustainable agriculture class, uh, Mr. Mule's class. It, it's an elective uh, for our high school students. This week, everything here we began harvesting Monday. So it's basil, bok choy, three different types of peppers, figs, all grown by students in um, multiple different aquaponics, um, basically s structures that he built. They're f it's fantastic. Um, so you can watch that while I read. Um, I'm going to walk you through our terrific course offerings we have for science, mathematics, and technology. Um, first is our science courses. Um, the vision of the uh, secondary science department is to enhance students' perseverance, critical thinking, real-world application, and investigation skills through hands-on, minds-on approach to learning science. The department is focused on allowing students to choose course options to allow for multiple opportunities to meet their graduation requirements, pursue an advanced regents diploma, earn college credit in science, and put together a comprehensive, competitive academic portfolio for a college application that demonstrates interest in STEM fields. Okay. So um, as you may know, our eighth graders have the opportunity to take two different regions courses, earth science or living environment. If your student is currently in living environment in eighth grade, they will take earth science in ninth grade. If they currently take earth science in eighth grade, they have the option to take living environment in ninth grade or challenge a course called LEAPS. It, LEAPS is an acronym for living environment, AP environmental science. Okay. LEAPS is a combined curriculum outlined by the New York State and College Board where students earn both Regents and AP credit upon successful completion of the course. The benefit of the course structure, oh, sorry. So that brings us to ninth grade and just a just a leap, uh, not to use that word, ahead to 10th grade, you'll see that the benefit of our structure, no matter how they started in 8th grade, our students wind up almost in the same place in 10th grade. 
Right, going back to what the Dr. Guzon said, a lot of times students mature or gain interest at, at different ages, and especially with the last two years of disrupted learning, they, they're all moving at different paces, right? But once you get to 10th grade, students have two uh, choices of two different levels of chemistry. We also offer a course called, a new course next year called Matter and Energy. Is it, oh, you have your, I didn't put the animation in. Dr. Guzon did, and didn't tell me. Right, sorry, that's 10th grade, so it popped in there. So I was talking to a blank screen. So let's go back. So in 10th grade next year, there's two different levels of chemistry, um, an R or an H, and there's a substantial difference in terms of rigor, but I understand the students have that ability to make that decision. Um, so it, it's a fantastic opportunity for students to have that opportunity, right? And um, Matter and Energy is a course for students who may not be 100% confident in taking chemistry in grade 10. Um, so Matter and Energy is designed to cover the next generation science standards for, for physical science and prepare students and make them more confident to take chemistry in 11th grade. Okay. And also um, students have an opportunity to concurrently take AP Biology along with chemistry if they choose so. Thank you. All right, now we'll move on to mathematics. The mathematics courses offered at Wanto High School are designed to give students a useful and enjoyable experience in mathematics. One of the major goals is to generate critical thinking skills and enable students to apply their knowledge of mathematics in order to analyze and solve unfamiliar problems in the real world today. The wide range of courses provided students with an opportunity to proceed at their own pace and achieve success. So similar to science, um, our current eighth grade math students will move on to algebra one in ninth grade and they'll move on to geometry in 10th grade. Right? Our current eighth grade students that are in algebra will move on to geometry in ninth grade and algebra two in 10th grade. What I do want to point out, and something that Dr. Guzon said, if you look at the R's and H's there, there's a Regents or an Honors level course. They have different weightings. They have different levels of rigor. But it is designed for students to have the flexibility and the opportunity um, to challenge themselves with an Honors course, even if they started out in middle school not as you know an Honors math student. If we have plenty of ninth grade Algebra 1 students who started in Math 8, went into Algebra 1, all of a sudden they started growing and they started feeling more confident in mathematics. And then in 10th grade, they have the opportunity to challenge geometry as, at the honors level. Okay. And additionally, our 10th grade Algebra 2 students have the opportunity to con concurrently take AP statistics as well. All right. Next, moving on to technology. The vision of the technology department is to provide a multidisciplinary classroom experience that allows students to apply their passion for hands-on experiences in order to collaborate, problem solve, and engage in critical and innovative thinking. So here in ninth grade, students will have the opportunity to take Introduction to Coding, which exposes students to state-of-the-art coding languages. We also have a course called Engineering, Drafting, uh, Drawing, Drafting, and Design for Production, which I'll sp speak about on the next slide. Um, looking a little beyond ninth grade, um, as students move into 10th grade, they have several options. We offer materials processing, where students learn woodworking skills, including building and finishing products. We also have basic car care, where students get hands-on experiences of maintaining and repairing cars. We have robotics, where students learn about machine automation and computer control systems by building and programming their own VEX robots. We have a new course, which is called Power Sports and Equipment Repair, where students assemble, diagnose, and repair mini bikes, um, power, and marine equipment, which is going to be awesome. And then students have the opportunity to take um, an AP computer science course also, which um, teaches them Java and, and Python programming. So just to touch on the ninth grade course offering that we have for our project Lead the Way curriculum. Um, this is a foundational course that merges Project Lead the Way Introduction to Engineering with a design and drawing for production course. Um, 
this course is unique and it's an excellent opportunity for students who are interested in engineering who want to go along this pathway to also earn a foundational art credit. So it's a, it's a unique course. It's, it combines both um, design for engineering with art. And upon successful completion of the course, students may earn one foundation of art credit, and they also have the opportunity to earn credits from the Rochester Institute of Te Technology with successful completion of the requirements of the course, including an end of um, course assessment. Right? And that is it for me. Thank you for your time. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our curriculum director for fine and performing arts and business education, Ms. Kelly Jones. Good evening, hello everyone. Let's go to our slide. So um, in for art, um, every high school student is required to have at least one arts credit for graduation. Um, as a ninth grader, you, uh, students are able to choose from three foundational art courses, uh, and those are in uh, highlighted in yellow there. They are studio and art, drawing and drafting design and studio and, and production, which is our Project Lead the Way course, um, and also our studio in media art which is a digital-based course. Um, we also offer, for next year, uh, two half-year electives for ninth graders. Uh, that, that will be our screen printing and our incredibly uh, popular right now uh, sculpture and ceramics course in our beautiful new uh, sculpture lab. So um, we're very excited about that program. It's really taken off. and. Um, we have hundreds of students creating all kinds of 3D uh, work, and uh, it's really been something that we're very, very proud of and, and looking forward to, to continue to grow. Um, let's see what else. Once you have your foundation course completed, uh, students then can move on to the courses listed below, categorized by art medium, uh, fine art, uh, photography, uh, digital, and art history. Um, as you can see, each category of art culminates in an AP course. Uh, we are excited to share that we, um, again, we're offering that AP 3D uh, for the first time this year. And uh, as it looks like, it's really uh, continuing to grow, and we're very excited to be able to offer that strand and really round out our art offerings um, with traditional fine art, our digital, and now incorporating our 3D piece. Um, we encourage students, and we, um, we really would like to see a well-rounded art student, so we encourage students to mix and match their courses uh, through the different strands. Um, those foundational courses really provide that um, layer of um, art that gives them the well-rounded and the, the traditional um, the principles and elements of design to, to be, a, I can't even get it out. <laughs> principles and elements of design to really be able to um, uh, go into any medium. So those courses, once they get those foundational courses done, they are able to accomplish um, and move from the studio media and jump to a fine art course because those elements and principles of design are covered in those foundational courses. I think I did it. Um, so for those incoming ninth graders, um, you do have five choices in art, the three foundation courses, and the two electives, uh, which next year will be the screen printing and ceramics. There. On to music. So here we have our performance-based uh, music offerings. The majority of music students in ninth grade will go into our first level course in their respective ensemble area, which would be concert band, chorale, and symphonic orchestra. Um, for the ambitious student, we encourage you to practice and audition for our honors level courses, uh, which would be Wind Ensemble, Arona Lavoci, and String Ensemble. These courses are audition-based and are very rigorous. They are considered college-level honors-weighted courses. Um, and audition material will be coming out very soon. So if you have questions about that for your rising ninth grader, we encourage you to talk to your um, ensemble director right now um, and get that material and, and make sure you schedule that audition with our high school staff. Um, so for ninth grade, um, we do have just those, um, those three courses. And if, you know, if they're in concert band now, they'll go into ninth grade concert band and same with chorale and orchestra. Um, we also offer three non-music um, ensemble courses. Uh, that would be music theory, AP music theory, and audio engineering. For our incoming ninth graders, the ninth grade eligible courses are that music theory one and the audio engineering course. 
Um, we strongly encourage students to take the theory course because it provides a strong foundation and understanding of how music is written and how sounds interact, interact with each other to create a full piece of music. Um, and it really is the basis for all mechanisms in, in creating music. Um, of course, once you complete that theory one, we encourage students to go on to the AP course um, and earn that college credit through their theory class. Audio engineering is a course in teaching students through the use of technology, how to create and manipulate music through a software like ProLogic and Pro Tools. Um, this software is considered industry standard, and it is um, in the music production lab that we have, which is state of the art and is really an incredible space. Um, with, it's a complete Mac lab with integrated keyboards. We have a, a sound booth uh, with recording equipment. Um, and students really get the behind the scenes and understanding of how um, music is manipulated and created through a digital sense. So it is a, really a fascinating course, um, and we're really encouraging the students to get into that and dabble into that new music technology area. So again, for ninth graders, Music Theory 1 and Audio Engineering are the eligible courses for you guys. We are also offering a um, choreography and dance class uh, for our ninth grade students next year. Um, this will be a full year, every other day course for students. Um, the focus of, or will be on the skills needed to design and create a dance performance piece while understanding the mechanisms that go into a successful performance. And these would include collaboration, presentation, and research into the performance. Um, this course does culminate in a dance performance at the end of the school year. And our business. Um, last year we redesigned our, our business uh, electives. Um, our course offerings offer three uh, clear paths for students to follow to ensure that they um, are well prepared for business, um, whether it be going on to school or into the workforce. Foundations of business and business communications are the ninth grade elective eligible courses, um, but they are also open to ninth through twelfth grade students uh, for, the, for the duration of, of the time that they're here. So from here, we offer three strands of business for students to choose from once they complete those two ninth grade courses. Um, you have to check the course catalog to see if uh, which pre prerequisites are there for these classes, but we do offer very three, three clear strands, business administration, finance, and marketing. Um, as same with art, we really encourage students to dabble in each one of these areas to make sure that they feel well-rounded and prepared if they are going to go into a business college program or into the workforce themselves. Um, we, those foundations courses for ninth graders really build and give the students an overarching um, review of all of that that they could be covered within each strand. So they take those foundations courses and then they can really start to hone and figure out exactly um, which avenue in the business world they're interested in, but again, we do encourage those students to, to, um, to explore each of the columns. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please reach out, and uh, I welcome Ms. Keene, Director of Athletics and Physical Education and Health and Driver's Ed. Driver's Ed. Don't forget Driver's Ed. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Keene, and I'm the Director of Physical Education, Health, Athletics, and Driver's Education. Uh, in terms of physical education, every student in grades 9 through 12 must take and pass physical education each semester to graduate. The structure and foundation of physical education is to promote a healthy lifestyle and encourage positive behaviors. We offer numerous options within the course for student choice and engagement, as well as fostering lifelong fitness and wellness. Health is also a required course, course for all students and must be taken in either 11th or 12th grade. Our health course covers the makeup of the human body and its functions while enforcing the key concepts of properly maintaining and promoting a healthy lifestyle in a continually changing environment. There's a premise of developing positive behaviors with an emphasis on eliminating behaviors that negatively affect a healthy lifestyle and place the individual or individuals at risk. For the first time in this coming year, uh, health can be taken either for a semester course every day or for a full year course every other day. Um, the course that your child goes into will be based on their specific schedule needs and availability. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, thank you very much. And up next is Mr. Musio. Oh, nope. Up next is Dr. Lachance.
Good evening. My name is Dr. Moira Lachance. I'm the supervisor for special education. Um, so those of you who have students with IEPs from the middle school, the programs and procedures will be similar in high school as well. Um, the Committee on Special Education, or CSE, um, individualizes each student's IEP, or Individualized Education Program, to ensure that each student um, receives specialized instruction tailored to their unique strengths and needs. Um, all decisions regarding special education will be made at your child's upcoming CSE meeting. Um, that's their annual review meeting that will occur late winter, early spring. Um, at the high school, we have a wide variety of programs and services to meet the needs of all of our students. Um, some of the services that we offer are occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language therapy, counseling, parent training. Um, and I'll just briefly review some of the programs that we also have. We have resource room, where your student is scheduled for one period a day where they, are, they meet with the special education teacher. Um, and that's in a small group. No more than five students can be in that resource room. And they target skills that are needed as indicated on their IEP. Um, we also have integrated co-teaching, whereas this class is taught by both a general education teacher and a special education teacher. Um, so there are students with and without IEPs in this class. Um, so even if your, student, if your child doesn't have an IEP, they might have had the benefit of being in an ICT. Um, we also offer a small special class, which is, just like it says, this, the class size is capped, so it's usually a smaller class size, and this is only taught by a special education teacher. Um, we also offer a hybrid option, whereas, you know, if your student, again, it, it is dependent on their IEP and the logistics of the schedule, but they could also do some classes where they're in ICT and other classes where they're in a small special class, just based on their needs um, and their strengths. Also, we have self elementary aid services, accommodations, and modifications. Again, all IEP driven or 504 driven. Um, and they're offered to ensure equity and equal access, and improve your child's chance of success, um, and their ability to access and participate in the curriculum. Um, modifications alter what is learned. For example, the content can be modified, whereas accommodations um, really alter how the child learns. So an accommodation might be for a student with limited visual acuity, they might have an accommodation of a large print um, on you know, their texts as well as their assessments. Um, that's where I go into the test accommodations. Again, this would also be on a 504 or an IEP where there's accommodations. Um, and this is just to ensure that um, we are really assessing the child's skills and their attainment of knowledge and content knowledge. And we're not um, really, impact they're not impacted by the effects of their disability. Um, so 504 plans really assure that equal access and a 504 would have um, test accommodations, program modifications and accommodations. A 504 doesn't have the usually services or programs on it. Um, so if you ever have any questions about special education, you could contact me at any time. You could also reach out to the building principals. I know they're very happy to answer questions as well. Um, and I hope to speak with you guys soon. And now Dr. Frank Musio. Still working on that doctorate, uh, <laughs> Dr. Lachance, but thank you. Appreciate it. Someday. Good evening, my name is Frank Musio, and I'm the Director of Guidance and Family Consumer Sciences, uh, better known in middle school as home and careers. So I see some students in the room, you're like, maybe what's, what's Family Consumer Sciences? But in the high school, we step it up a little bit in terms of the skill level and the projects that we do, and it's called Family Consumer Sciences. And how I would really best describe uh, the Family Consumer Science Department is uh, experiential learning. It, um, it, there is theory involved, but the students learn how to cook by cooking. And they learn how to create budgets and, and shop on a budget by creating their own budgets. <laughs> they begin to understand how nutrition plays a role in not only in overall health, but in their athletic performance and even in their academic performance. Uh, and I use the word understand a lot when I describe this department because uh, I do see the light bulb go off uh, with students and they, um, 
and they begin to understand the role of the parent as we discuss those types of decisions that families make uh, in our human development strand. Excuse me, human development strand. As you can see, we do have two strands in family consumer science, the culinary arts and the human development. And as ninth graders, uh, the offering for the culinary program would be culinary foundations. And in that course, we're going to go over those foundations of, of safety and of knife skills and of, uh, of the different components that would go into you know, creating, creating a meal. Um, the offering for ninth graders in human development would be adolescent development. And adolescent development is going to encompass those social, emotional, physical, intellectual changes that take place in students from 13 through 21 and the different kinds of dilemma and decisions that they make. It's, uh, we, we began going into that curriculum this year and it's become very popular. So we're really excited about introducing the adolescent development course next year. Those courses would be followed, as you can see, uh, in 10th grade in culinary in uh, creative cuisine and uh, international gourmet foods in 10 through 12. And then um, we step it up even further in 12th grade, 11th and 12th grade with Master Chef and Food and Nutrition. And on the human development side, we would like to have students follow adolescent development with child development and ultimately our college level uh, developmental psychology course. Now in the, the, um, the human development strand, let me just speak of that for just a moment. That's really where the theory meets this experiential learning. We have something we call the play group, and it is part of each of these three courses where children from this community come in with their caregivers, and they are paired with our high school students and after some training. And so they can really experience firsthand when uh, children acquire, let's say, motor skills and acquire language skills and uh, experience separation anxiety. And all these theories that they've learned about really come to life you know, in our play group. So we're really uh, we're excited about that. We brought it back this year, and it really was, was successful. So we're really hopeful for next year as well. OK. Uh, now with my, my other department, uh, the guidance and counseling department. Uh, our mission, as you enter ninth grade, is uh, to prepare you for the next phase of your life. And we do that in a variety of ways. We have a lot of programs here in school. We have programs at night, as you can see. Uh, we're very involved in the scheduling process, as your middle school counselors are. Uh, but we do it mostly through personal counseling. And just like in the middle school, uh, we don't make appointments. Uh, students can come in when they are available. Uh, we try to limit that to. Uh, uh, non-core classes so that students don't mix, miss class, but we really try to be as available as possible to build relationships with, with students so that if there is a problem, personal problem, or something they want to talk about, that they do feel free to come and see us. But also it gives the counselor a chance to get to know the student on a, on a much more personal level. And then that counselor who knows the student best can uh, direct the student better in terms of course offerings, in terms of college choices, in terms of a, of a really outstanding letter of recommendation eventually. So we do encourage students to come and visit us whenever they're available. Now the difference really between the middle school and the high school departments is that we are going to hold students a little bit more accountable. We are. We, uh, if a student comes down every day during math period, we're going to send them back, <laughs> obviously. But um, if there's some legwork to do as far as getting a college application or an application for a summer camp, we're going to have the student do that legwork because we want that student to, to mature. Uh, if they're filling out an application for something online or working papers or something like that, we're going to give the student a little bit more of that responsibility to do it. So it's not that we're, uh, we don't like you as much here in high school. It's that we, we want to get you prepared for the next level of your life. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of night programs and a lot of day programs. As freshman parents, we do have freshman parent meetings that take place right after our, um, our overall teacher parent meetings. We have um, them with the counselor, with the parent. They're a little bit longer. They can be virtual to accommodate your work schedule. We find right after the first quarter grades, it's a great conversation to have 
of how, how your child is doing. So uh, we, we hope that you participate in that. Uh, and the big thing that we really do with our freshmen is a, a course that we instituted two years ago. It's called the Freshman Experience. And it's taught every six days uh, in, a, um, in an earth science lab or in a living environment lab, depending. But they're for, just for ninth graders. It's a non-graded class. And as you can see, there's a variety of topics. Now, so far this year, we've taught lessons on transitioning to high school, which is a big topic. Students are now faced with different kinds of, of stressors and things like that. We talked about stress management. We talked about study skills. We talked about organizational skills, time management, goal setting, gratitude, among other things. Um, decision making and we have a whole half a year to go so we're going to be talking about cyber safety and, and all kinds of things. We try to make these lessons as best we can uh, into a game and sometimes we'll come in to the room and the kids will say we're playing a game today uh, just because we try to make the learning as fun as possible and so we really pride ourselves in that. We, we love it and really the, the greatest byproduct of the freshman experience program is that a student in ninth grade will not, will not only know their counselor, but they'll know another counselor who teaches perhaps their freshman experience class. So that's been a, a tremendous, tremendous thing. I'm gonna to touch briefly on the vocational ed program. And that doesn't really happen until a student is in the middle of their 10th grade. When we do scheduling, if they would like to take a vocational program at one of our BOCES centers for their 11th and 12th grades, they can do that, but it's not too early to start investigating these programs. There are programs in cosmetology and in automotive and uh, even aviation. Uh, there's, there's just there's so many great programs out there, but a student would spend half the day at a BOCES Center and half the day at Wansaw High School. So it's not for everybody, but for a select group of students who are interested, it, it can be a wonderful opportunity. So if you're in ninth grade next year, and we'll talk about it the following year. Okay. And with that, let me turn it over to Mr. Pappas, our assistant principal. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. It's good to see you all. I wanted to take this moment to thank all the directors for sharing all of their programs with you guys. Um, I know it's a lot of information to kind of take all at once. If you have any questions about something you may have missed, uh, you could always reach uh, all the information. You could access it through the curriculum guide on our uh, website. Uh, to get there, you just click on the district website, go to the Wanto High School, click about Wanto High School course offerings, and then that should bring you straight to the curriculum guide. What's really great about the curriculum guide is that it gives you all of the information for all the courses, but some of the courses actually have links that will bring you to some videos that teachers created and they, they share a lot of information with you uh, regarding uh, their courses. Uh, and, and it's very self-explanatory. You can see it. It'll say, watch now. You click on it. It'll bring you to a video. So that's on, that's on our district website. At this point, um, where we are in the scheduling process, I will be building the master schedule for the high school so I get all the information for the eighth graders once they, once they meet with their counselors in the middle school, as well as the grades 9 through 11. And um, you know, I take a holistic approach to uh, creating the master schedule, looking at um, all of the requests for all of the students and all the grade levels. Where we are in the process specifically now for the rising ninth graders, um, middle schoolers will be meeting with their middle school counselors next week. And they will be given a course selection form. And on that form, we'll list all of, ninth, all of the ninth grade courses in all of the core areas for English and social studies, math and science, world language. They will have an opportunity on that form to select what art or music they will take in ninth grade, um, as well as any electives of their choices that were presented here this evening um, from all of the other areas like facts and business or art, um, et cetera. So with that, they will fill out their, their, you know, they'll rank what they like and they'll bring that form back to their middle school, to their counselor, and the counselors will input that information into Infinite Campus. Um, another thing that you'll be able to see as well is that recommendations will be done by middle school teachers within the next week. 
uh, and that information will be communicated with you. So when counts, uh, sorry, when teachers begin making the begin making those recommendations, and once those recommendations are finalized and closed, we will be reaching out to you so that you could access that in real time to be able to see what your child was recommended for. At that point, the counselor will see all of the recommendations that teachers made for your, for your kids. And you know there could be changes as counselors meet with the kids at, at the middle school level. And they'll be able to put together a nine period day and eventually that will get transferred over to me and I'll take that information and I'll build the schedule for the incoming ninth graders. Um, a couple of deadlines and how we communicate all that. Um, in January, we will communicate with you and let you know all the courses that your child was recommended for by their middle school teachers. In February, there'll be another notification that's sent out to all eighth grade families that will, um, could, that will communicate specifically what your child requested. So what that means is just because they might be recommended for a particular course may not necessarily be the course that the child requests um, for to take next year. And what that means, uh, again, specifically a request is just what they want to take. And at that point, I start building between the beginning of March up until the end of May. And that's kind of the frozen period of the master schedule where, you know, Kids can't really change their minds um, because we'll give opportunities in February before February break. If, um, if a child wants to change their mind, uh, they'll have the opportunity to do that with their middle school counselor. Uh, and at that point, we'll enter this frozen period where the master schedule will be built. And then, you know, beginning of June, we communicate a third time with you and say, these are the courses that you were actually scheduled for because the, sched the building process is at that point over. And there will be an opportunity there as well to be able to make a change. Um, and we'll communicate that with you then. Uh, the only time, again, we can't really make a change is when the, the schedule is being built because when you have too many moving parts, it becomes really difficult to build the schedule holistically with all requests taken into consideration. So that's kind of the process. Um, we're very open and transparent. We'll communicate with you so that you guys have access to see exactly what the, uh, what courses your child was recommended for. Um, again, um, feel free to reach out to your middle school, um, to the middle school counseling team because um, they're, they're heavily involved in the process as well. And um, you know, by the end of January, beginning of February, you know, we should have a good idea of what they, you know, oh, and they will have a really good idea of what they like. And they'll also bring that uh, form to your attention as well at home. And you'll, you'll, you'll obviously have um, a voice in that as well to see exactly what, what works best for your child. So that being said, um, uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to Dr. Gazone and he'll wrap up the evening for you guys. I do wanna thank you all for your participation and if you have any questions, um, you could always email me um, or any of the directors or, or, or Dr. Gazone and we'll uh, answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Pappas covered most of the stuff on the slide already. Just uh, around their freshman orientation will be in August. Uh, we will communicate that information uh, as we get closer. Um, we typically do, at least the last year or two, we do uh, two sessions, like an AM session and a PM session. We, we do that because we like to keep the group small. Um, and we, but we do like a, we did this year we did like a pizza in between for all the kids, which was uh, a nice format for the freshman orientation. So that will be in August. Um, Mr. Pappas, again, I think reviewed most of this stuff, uh, but uh, for the high school, our lunch periods are four, five, six, uh, four through eight, uh, and final verifications are in June. Check your email. Uh, but this is really where I want to like highlight, and um, these are our parent organizations. They are fantastic. Uh, each and every single one of them do uh, wonders for our kids, for the programs, for the students that they represent, um, and I really want to. Uh, urge each of you to, you know, if you see there's a, an organization that you, you feel like your child is connected to in some way, uh, I urge you to, to join. Um, you know, the, the, these groups can't do what they do for our kids uh, without the support of our families. So uh, if, you, if you haven't, you know, please consider doing so. Uh, if you're not sure how, uh, you know, you could reach out to us and we'll put you in, in contact with our, uh, our whichever power organization that you want us to. Uh, they're fantastic, they really are. 
And with that, um, you know, well, that's the end of our formal presentation. Uh, if we're here to answer uh, questions, if uh, any of you have them, if you don't, that's okay too. Second time that joke landed today. Uh, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, that's uh, it's 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 right. So it's okay. It's uh, it's you need either art credit or music credit. Yeah. So if that was confusing, we apologize. It's art or music. You don't need to take art and music. It's it's one or the other. And the only thing we highlighted was uh, the project lead the way engineering course would count as a foundational art credit. Yep. And any other questions? Feel free to ask. It's okay. Okay. Uh, not in ninth grade. Uh, in uh, ninth grade, they are responsible to be uh, in the cafeterias. Uh, we have a freshman calf where they take attendance. And uh, yes, they will get detention if they don't sign into the cafeteria in ninth grade. Uh, we are responsible for them being in the building. And how we make sure that they're in the cafeteria is we have them sign in. So sometimes, you know, if, if we give a warning or two, uh, if, if they don't show up, one of our deans might say, might call up and say, "Hey, so and so has got detention, and it's because they didn't sign into lunch. Uh, if they don't sign into lunch, we don't know where they are, and potentially they could be out of the building. Uh, that, that's just the way we kind of monitor it." Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the way, so the way uh, our systems are, are kind of set up, uh, not only for like something like that, right? Let's say they have speech or they have uh, a counselor meeting. Uh, they they sign in right into those those areas, and, and uh, those areas will communicate with our attendance office uh, where they are. So like at the end of the day, our counseling department will give a list to our attendance office, and uh, she might be marked as absent for the moment for a couple of the periods, but uh, at the end of the day, when um, uh, our, that list goes over to our then attendance office, that will be resolved. Okay. And it's the same thing for music lessons or uh, any other type of formal educational meetings. Yes. So, the yeah. It's basically you're you're correct. It's basically two slots. Um, if I'm thinking, is it two semesters or is it after the art and the music? It's one. So with art and music, it's two. So after they choose art or music, which we highly recommend, or so after the course, there's essentially two slots, right? We highly, highly, highly recommend for all our eighth graders and ninth freshmen to take a foundational credit, whether it be art or music, as one of those two. So when they choose that one, now they're essentially left with one slot. Uh, at that point in time, to Ms. Jones's point, they could take art and music. She's obviously the director of fine and performing arts, right? You know, that's her preference. Uh, but once, really just one slot because they, we recommend that they take that foundational credit, get it out of the way in the ninth grade year. And then they essentially have a slot that could be filled either maybe full, through a, a full year elective or through two half year electives. Or even for this coming year, we have some flexibilities with students taking full year courses that go every other day. Um, or if your child has like a support lab, uh, a support class, like a, a ELA lab or algebra support lab, they might, get, they might take that opposite, um, you know, maybe a audio engineering or a, what's another freshman level, a, a choreography and dance, you know, or, or something like that. It, they, net, they net one slot. You get one slot meaning one period, right? So right. that period could, like Dr. Jones said, could be two semester electives or it could be two full year alternate day electives. Got it. And is it college? Is that a mandatory? It is mandatory. Uh, at this point, it's only for 11th and 12th graders, though. Only 11th and 12th graders? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Sure. Good question. Um, so what we have, we're unique at the, uh, the high school level, at least here, um, our science labs 
they traditionally run, or they do run, two days in a six-day cycle. So a couple of different places, they run uh, every other day. Uh, we run two days in a six-day cycle. Traditionally, the way it was, it was structured, that, si that third day in that six-day cycle would be almost like a, a standalone study hall for our freshmen. Uh, so uh, we, you know, under you know the uh, guidance of uh, Mr. Muzio, uh, you know, we, we put together. Uh, we said, let's let's do something creative with that study hall that the kids were getting, and uh, our, our counselors were on board, and they said, let's let's teach. So uh, they don't lose anything, right? So what they lost was a study hall that every single ninth grader was getting. Uh, that was a study hall, but now it's being substituted in with instruction once in every six day cycle. So there, there's there's the there's no loss, only gain. They only have study hall time if they don't fill their full nine period day. So there is no, there really is no study hall. We build nine period days with no study halls. Um, there could be an opportunity if you feel like your child needs a study hall. Uh, we, could, we could have a conversation about that, right? Um, but you know that when we build their schedules, they have a, a, a full nine period day. Yep. Yes. Um, lunch is part of that program. Uh, lunch is part of lunch is part of that regular science nine period day. Um, so it's no different if a child takes leaps versus earth science. Um, it's it's still a period and a lab. So opposite the lab goes PE. Opposite the lab goes PE essentially. Right. Yeah. So essentially, it's English, social studies, math, science with PE. Um, you have your world language, that's seven, which leaves you two slots to her point prior, right? And we recommend that one is the... Uh, one is the, the, the world, no, they don't, because it's... it's, it's oh, they're, it, yeah. In the middle school living environment, I think work that way with the, with the lab component, but in the high school, they have um, the, the class meets every day, but two days in a six-day cycle, they have a double period. Yeah. It's because middle school is blocked. It's, that's probably, it's part of their block scheduling. It's a little different. So here it's not yeah. blocked. It's, here, here they get a full lunch. They get a full, they get a full lunch as, as long as they don't overextend themselves in, in courses for nine periods. Okay. Yeah. Yes, in the back. Go ahead. No early bird at the high school. It's early enough. That would be early. That, <laughs> that, that would be really early. Yes. Yes. In the back. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, that is different. Uh, so what the parent is referencing is, uh, for the first time, we are um, we have presented and um, we are exploring introducing uh, uh, Wanto High School Science Research Academy for next year for ninth graders. Uh, it's really a, a four-year program for students who qualify. It is a competitive program. Uh, at this point in time, we have offered invitations to families of students who are dual um, are, who are dual accelerated right now at the middle school. So that's if they're currently in earth science and algebra. Uh, the reason why it is a, like an invitation type of thing right now is that we, we only have limited spots. Uh, there are only 24 spots that, that we have. Um, and there is a system of how students will be, um, I want to say, uh, sequenced. Right, so things that will be considered are things like a student's attendance, how they perform in algebra and earth science in quarter one and quarter two, how they perform in the midterm in quarter one and quarter two. Uh, there will be a like a, a reasoning reasoning assessment also, and all that will be objective data. And you know, what are, if there are other slots after the first initial pool, we will absolutely uh, open that to to other people as well. But for right now, it, it's for those uh, students who are dual accelerated. Uh, uh, no, that replaces their elective. That one, so that that one extra period, that becomes their elective. So instead of maybe taking culinary foundations and business foundations, that takes their elective. Yes. Yeah. So if and if a student took that course, the uh, foundations of research and statistics, it would be two essentially two science courses. It would be the the leaps or the living environment with um, this foundations of research and statistics course. Oh, the, the question was the, the new foundations and research, 
Wanto High School Research Academy Foundations of Research and Statistics class, a lot to say. Okay, does that take the place of um, uh, leaps? But it doesn't. It just takes the place of the uh, elective course slot that is still available. Yes, you had your question. Yes. Yes, Foundations of Business is a uh, half year elective. If you have a, a child who is really business you know, oriented and says, I want a full year of business, uh, they would parlay business foundations with uh, business communications. So that would give them two half year courses for a full year of business. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Uh, the res the res uh, research foundations or research, uh, research and statistics would replace those classes if they were accepted into that program. Okay. I do want to uh, clarify something about the way that the middle schoolers are going to be selecting their electives. Um, you want to talk? Be, they're just they're talk to the, the mic. Yeah. They're going to be instructed by their uh, counselors to be able to write down what electives they want, regardless if they're ex you know if they're accepted into the Science Research Academy at the at beginning in ninth grade. So because you might, uh, you might want to, they might want to enter the Science Research Academy and, and take the Foundations of Research and Statistics class. Um, at that point, they will have to make a choice. If they do want to pursue the Science Research Academy, they would have to then meet with their counselor and kind of remove the, the, the electives that they chose. But it's not like they're not going to have the opportunity to put those electives in place before that decision has to be made. So they'll, they'll have the opportunity, like every other eighth grader, to be able to choose what electives they want prior to deciding whether they want to pursue the Science Research Academy at the high school level. Yeah. And uh, more information to come on the Research Academy in our night presentation next week. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so Project Lead the Way uh, is a, it's a, it's a, prestigious program that's backed by institutions. So we, it's backed, uh, the engineering pathway is backed by Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, so it's eight into nine. So it, it's for the freshman, freshman students. So it's an engineering class that's backed by Project Lead the Way through Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, that class, so if you have a child who it maybe have a, has a passion for, early passion for engineering, and rather than uh, focusing uh, a full, uh, all their attention on, let's say, like a studio art class, they could combine uh, some of the elements of art with the Project Lead the Way Engineering Drafting class and get a foundational engineering credit course and count it as their art credit all in one. It's almost, like, it's almost like double dipping, I would say. Uh, the only thing I would say is students aren't guaranteed the, credit, the college credit unless they pass the course and there is a, a culminating assessment at the end that they would have to take in order to, to get that college credit. That is correct. If, if, even if they didn't pass the assessment, let's say at the end, they passed the course with whatever grade that's a passing grade, they fulfilled their New York State requirement for art. Um, Yeah, so the way, the way it works, the project, as long as you fulfill the, those requirements, uh, Project Lead the Way has some affiliations with, uh, and they, there's a list of them you could see in the catalog too, uh, that have agreed to take uh, those credits right off the bat, uh, right, from, um, right from Project Lead the Way. Uh, other institutions might ask for a transcript from Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, all that information, if you look at the catalog, uh, there's hot links within the program that, that kind of explains that a little bit more. And you can always call and, and email, and we, we can pick up the phone, and we can talk it through a little bit more, too, if you want. Okay. Yep. Anything else? I hope I got everything. Okay. We are all very accessible, every single one of us. So if you ever have a question, uh, please feel to, to reach out. Again, ca your counselors, too. They're great sources of re uh, for information. Thank you, and uh, have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs>